The following podcast contains spoilers and explicit language. Listener discretion is advised. Hello and welcome to Animated Anarchy, the show that takes a critical look at animated features of all kinds to determine the good and the bad. Hello, I'm Andrew Dickman. And I'm Mike Ruacco. And welcome once again to another episode where we talk about robots that uh, are pretty much dying or dead. They're not really in disguise either. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> they're kind of out in the open. Yeah, they're, and they're, they're pretty much all- everywhere. But uh, if you haven't guessed already, we're talking about... Ferngully, that's right. <laughs> Ferngully. <laughs> no, it's the Transformers movie. Not the Michael Bay ones, but the original one from 1986. Six. Right? Yeah. And we have a special guest with us today, Steve Yurko. More hey! than meets the eye. Oh, yes. God. <laughs> yeah. This is my fault. This really is all my fault. Actually, it is, and we, we, <laughs> <laughs> and we actually it is. No, um, oh, we we kind of had a plan to. I mean, we have a huge list of movies that we're going to see, at, 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 regardless of uh, what we plan or anything. But the Transformers movie is one of those movies where it's like. Um, you know, we need we kind of need an expert on this, and <laughs> and Steve was very very much eager to insistent. Ins- <laughs> well, I was, was going to say very uh, persistent, <laughs> very eager. Well, this was back to- when you guys started the show, and uh, Mike had to take some time off, and mm-hmm. you had some guests on, and I said like, hey, if Mike's ever out of town, you need a movie and a guest. <laughs> Transformers the movie, me, yeah, <laughs> and well, I refuse to leave. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, we we kind of needed to figure out our plans mm-hmm. and what how to do this, and and honestly, like um, I, I think it would have been best to wait for it because I would what this. This week was the thirtieth anniversary. Uh, no, the thirtieth anniversary was uh, a month ago. Oh, you but f- we f- missed it. <laughs> What's the point? Stop. But, damn. It. But as of this recording, the uh, the first American Blu-ray release has you know just happened. Yeah, it came out on the... Blu-ray. Mm-hmm. So uh, what what better time to review it than now? So Rather than a month uh, ago. <laughs> so it was either that or um, uh, the Secret of Nim Two. <laughs> Oh, Electric God. Boogaloo. We're, no, we so. never. No, <laughs> robots don't die in that movie. Yeah, we this, needed some robot death in our lives. So uh, mm. yeah, certainly and, this this one did, and this one provide I think, quite a bit. I like the chemistry of it because of this particular when we watched it because Steve knows a lot about Transformers. I know yeah. a decent amount. And Andrew knows. I know a little bit. A little bit. I only and know, I know like a little bit. Absolutely nothing <laughs> you about Transformers. Shit. All I know is that they're Transformers. They're robots <laughs> in disguise. Optimus Prime is the main Autobot, and Megatron like, is the main Decepticon. I like how when we were watching it, it was like, which one's itchy? So is is which one's that one? Is that one like Optimus? I know there's what is Soundwave that? and yeah. Starscream and. Bumblebee. There's a huge cast of What's, robots, toys. But it's great because they say their names a whole bunch of times. It's not like the Michael the, Bay movies where it's just like, who, who's that piece of sharp metal? Broken like, piece of metal? I, I, they're not, that amalgamation of uh, gears and wires just well, I, kind of clinking together. Yeah, it's I don't want to talk about those movies too much. <laughs> but one, one of the things i got to say is I... I talk about this movie a lot, mm-hmm. and it's just it's a constant thing now. Every time I say Transformers the movie, I don't say the Transformers or Transformers. I say Transformers the movie. Everyone's like Michael Bay. I'm like, no, the one from 1986. God, the one that existed before I was even born. <laughs> no, not uh, that one. But I, I, I made sure to ask Mike. Is like, is there any any questions you have before going into this? Anything yeah. you need to clear up? And like. You knew everything, but it just reminded me of a time I was... I, there's n- there's not, honestly, going into it, there's not really a whole bunch you need to know. It's straightforward, right? Kind of. More I or mean, less, I think. More or less. Well, the thing was, is that the first thing going in was like, oh, look, it's, it's Hot Rodimus. And it's like, I already know about Hot Rod. And it was like... You, then you said like this was his first appearance. Yeah, and and I was just like, wait a minute. So he wasn't in the show before this. That would, nope. and especially in the way that they portrayed him, he's just like right next to a kid, um, and and he's fishing with him. And it's like, oh hey, this is normal. It's like, yeah, hey, it's- hey, Hot Rod, I love uh, uh, fishing with you, and and I can just imagine someone coming into this movie. It's just like. Who's that? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's, why, oh, it's, why are they so chummy? It's all genius marketing. Uh, now, there's one thing I want to say about just like clearing everything up. 
Uh, obviously, you guys, like, you knew plenty. I, I was such a huge Transformers fan when I was younger in mm. high school. And by the way, I was in high school in the early 2000s. Yeah. Uh, which is really, I, well, it's weird to say. I was honestly too young for this movie. Mm. Yeah. I mean, for, for me, I mean, 86, I was like probably four years old. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I the, the first movie that I've ever seen in theaters, I think, was the Jetsons movie. Um, it, it was probably something else. I think it was like the Land Before Time or uh, or or Secret of Nim or something like that, or a Disney movie. I, I can't remember. Mine was fi- c- according to my parents. My mine was Five Will Goes West. Yeah, I cannot re- honestly pinpoint the exact movie that I first saw in theaters, but I do no remember. One ever can. Yeah. The, I I do remember the the theater that I did see these movies in, um, and. That's pretty much it. I know that mm-hmm. Dragons, uh, Dragons Lair was out <laughs> at the time, um, and uh, yeah, th- it's one of those things where it's just like you know you kind of have to pick and choose which things you've been exposed yeah. to. And Transformers wasn't necessarily a show that I grew up with either. Mm-hmm. Um, so really, my memories are very vague about. I know that Transformers existed. I have a lot of the toys. Um, but purely on the basis of I like robot stuff, yeah. and Transformers are like the perfect robot toy. Uh-huh. Uh huh. So being a kid and growing up with the show and everything, I mean, I'm sure it's like it was like a blast. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's it's weird because for me, like I grew up with Transformers, but I grew up in the '90s, and by then the original TV show was done. It was yeah. in syndication, and they introduced what was you know, and that's now referred to as Generation One, and they came up with Generation 2, which was... Generation you know, 2 was after the movie, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, it was just them repainting a lot of the toys, coming up with new toys, and I grew up with those. So I always knew what Transformers were. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, you know, they they came out with a series back in 2001. It was called Transformers Robots in the Skies. It was a anime that was dubbed and aired, like, on Fox Kids. Uh, yeah, I, and I have to say that a lot of my exposure to Transformers was those CG movies because I was watching a lot of TV at the time, mm-hmm. and those would happen to be on Cartoon Network or yeah. something like that. And this was before Transformers animated series. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and, and I can't say that going into those was necessarily good because they're they're oh beast wars was also another yeah thing i grew up on beast i forgot to say beast wars with. was really the transformers series i, grew I, up on. I would honestly say my biggest exposure to transformers would be beast wars yeah. and i necessarily don't like that show myself mm. but i know that i watched a lot of it oh yeah so <laughs> so it was like one of those things that was like it's on i have to watch it mm-hmm. and it's all right, like, but Beast, it's not for me. Yeah, like Beast Wars was my series, and I still knew like the original characters, but like I could barely remember anything about Transformers. So when they started incorporated like the original series into it, I was like losing my mind. Right. So yeah. like I've always been a fan, but like then they started bringing over some of those Japanese series and dubbing them, and you know I'm still young. I just like robots that turn into cars. But but what's great about the series is that generation to generation, it's like it's still exposed to people. Yeah. And. That leads people to want to see the previous versions, mm-hmm. and thankfully those are available to people. So, so um, available now. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, now, yes. Yeah. But um, having it available to people who are interested into it, like in modern times, you kind of start to get a realization. It, it's either, oh God, this really sucked, or wow, I really like this. I liked what they used to have. Yeah. Uh, as opposed to what they have now, which I still like, it's mm-hmm. you know it's one of those things where it's you're exposed to something and then you appreciate the previous versions of it. Mm-hmm. So that's that can that's something that can be said about Transformers in itself. Yeah, I mean, say what you want about the Michael Bay movies, they kind of expose people to the Transformers in general, which yeah. kind of. I mean, honestly, that's really how I got more into Transformers was because of those movies. I was I, already super into Transformers <laughs> when, was, when that was that. I remember being excited for a live action movie. Now it's like God. By the time that fourth one came out, <laughs> I couldn't get over the fact that me being such a huge Transformers fan at one point that I was seeing Jersey Boys instead <laughs> with my mother than going to see the fourth Transformers movie next door. I'm <laughs> like, what a sad, ta- what sad realization. I remember, I remember being, I don't know if you were there, but I remember, because we, Steve and I went to college together, mm-hmm. and I remember being in, 
on at the school and just we heard that Michael Bay was doing a Transformers. We heard it. it the first one didn't even come out yet, I think. No, the first one came out before we were even in college. Really? It came out. Yeah. Like 2007? Came out our uh, senior year of high school. 2007. 2007. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we were hearing that they were doing more. Yes. <laughs> I think that was the conversation. We were like, yeesh. <laughs> just, well, the, I, it, the second one was just but it's, atrocious. I, it's Transformers are still relevant, but it just blows my mind. Uh, I just think back because I was, I was such a huge fan. And I, you know, I, was, I, I remember my animation class in high school. Where it was kind of like, you know, you have to at least do one project. It's like, pick an animated series and do a presentation on it. And most of it's like, this was, Family Guy was made by Seth MacFarlane. Seth MacFarlane worked on Johnny Bravo. Family Guy is funny. The end. And I was such a huge Transformers fan. But, like, I did my research. Because I know I'm like, well, there's a backstory to this. Of course it's a big market. And himself it's such toys. a weird thing to have a backstory to yeah. it, too. It's like, I, I have a thing called The Ark. Mm-hmm. Wh- or it's like... It's basically a Bible, the Bible for yeah. for the Transformers themselves, like the history before the Transformers were Transformers, or even a toy line. Mm-hmm. And it's like, wow, what a weird like, what a weird They're culture. Robots we have. that turn into trucks. And yeah, it was it was like set players. Like what? I mean, I I have friends in the animation industry who have basically, I mean, they they took uh, uh, Japanese toys. Uh-huh. And use those as like here. This is what we're doing right now. Yeah, we're we're making these toys, mm-hmm. and then they just had to apply that to a cartoon. Yeah, Hasbro pretty much came in. They're like, well, these two companies are making these toys. We're gonna just, you know, get the rights to produce all these toys, and then just make a series about it. And and by that, yeah, we have like a huge history now. Now, yeah. Yeah. so it's so, but it's so weird but, to think. It, j- it just reminds me, though, I just want to get this one story in high school, in this animation class, and I, of course, I did, because I, at one point, when it's like, oh, we're doing a stop motion, I brought in all my Transformers toys, and I had a good friend that I was buddied up with, but I practically could have just done that on my own, because I made stop motion movies as a kid, mm. and, you know, like, I'll use that term loosely, uh, but I was like, I, what, like the, the only thing was like, oh, just make a clay character and then animate that. I'm like, well, can, can we bring in other stuff? And my teacher's like, yeah, go, go nuts. <laughs> yeah, whatever. And I brought in yeah. all my Transformers toys. I'm like, yeah, I made a clay character. Yeah, and I just had to get before. caught in the middle of a battle between Autobots and Decepticons and just getting destroyed. Um, yeah, working with action figures yeah. and doing stuff. Oh, I, I did that myself. That uh, was fun. But I, when I'm talking about the presentation, because of course I chose Transformers, but I thought, I'm like, well, I could actually get a decently length. Uh, presentation about this, talk about the toys and the concept and all that, and I played a clip. You basically from... went, you were an overachiever, went above oh, and yeah. beyond about oh, yeah. this. Well, it, it, it because was... it's something that you're into. I was like, like... I was like one of like three actual artists in that animation <laughs> class, but I, I, and then I took a clip from like the original pilot of uh, Transformers, it was Optimus Prime and Megatron just fighting yeah. at, at a dam. And I played that clip. No introduction. Like, that's why I asked you. I said, like, is there anything you need to know? And you were good. <laughs> I played that clip. After explaining what the concept of Transformers is, and the first thing I hear was, I, I don't get it. <laughs> what, what was going on? I was like, are you joking? It, it, it was two robots. One was good and one was evil. They were fighting. They're <laughs> toys. Why are you thinking hard about this? And I'm the fan! <laughs> like, I'm, I'm so aware that, like... Transformers is just a big marketing scheme, but it's just it's it's like Star Wars too. Yeah. Like it's it, it, it's so it's fun. become something bigger than that, but it's still yeah. When you, when you look and read between the lines, yeah. it's, it, it is if, what it is. I I just find it fascinating because there's so many different interpretations to this one thing that just was a corporate shill for merchandising. But yeah, for but, me for me Transformers was just every time I'd see Transformers anything, not even so much the toys, just Transformers. I'd be like, some poor bastard <laughs> had to animate <laughs> in perspective yeah. Yeah. robots transforming into cars and, and explosions and animated backgrounds. Like we just watched this movie they and even I'm literally cheat that sometimes, yeah. which right. is funny. And I'm and I'm we were watching this movie and I've never seen it before. Oh yeah. And I'm like, just Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> like to animate like yeah. The this, first this, scene. This, there's a scene with this giant yeah, le- asshole. Le- let's. G- <laughs> All right. Let's, 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 let's get into the movie. Yeah. So there's this giant asshole <laughs> flying through space with a with the brains. The year is 2005. It, it's the year. Oh yeah, that, that, that was great. The yeah. The year and is it's, 2005. It's the, the thing is passing past camera. You don't remember that? It's, it was just like a couple years ago. Yeah. And it just passes by camera, and it's all these 
shiny bolts intricate. and little things, and then it goes away in perspective, and you just see it floating away. Some poor bastard has to <laughs> try to in between and and draw that. Yeah, and it's like that would make I. I would just drop a pencil and be like, well, I'm done. I'm it was funny it. because when when we were watching this, I first said, I was like, wow, this is like, it's almost like Akira. And then you mentioned to me, it's like, oh, yeah, Akira came after this, like yeah. years afterwards. And I'm so bad with my dates and everything. It's like, I could have sworn Akira was way before that. No, but, late 80s. But yeah, it's like, this was pretty much Japanese animation. Yeah. It, I, it, I mean, Toei. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, they did a bang up job with it. I mean, it, it's not perfect, no, but it's no. but it's honestly looking at it, it's impressive. There's a giant orange space asshole out in in floating in space going toward a robotic planet that is just nothing but garbled. Ma- I mean, we talk about the movies, the Michael Bay movies and how there's like just Noise. N- nothing. Yeah, noise. Yeah. It, it's it's mechanical noise, and and those are just the characters. And these are like <laughs> yeah. I mean, those are just the characters. But it's like you see like a giant planet, and you think about all of the drawing that has gone into it, it's a traditional animated feature. So yeah. so looking at that is first off, it's impressive, and we talk about this all the time. How it's like, do you do it to be? to be impressive or do you do it because it's like necessary you know I mean, it, it, it's like i mean this is an entirely different subject altogether they, my watching eyes were it, crossing like, watching that scene. Yeah. yeah seeing like a planet being sucked into a sphincter of it, it's just like uh, okay unicron is a planet okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah he, okay uh, he eats things through what looks like an asshole <laughs> <laughs> no, right, it, well, it, never, well, it never stops being funny. I know, but it, it's, for people that don't know, because I'm sure some of your listeners are probably rolling their eyes that you're doing this movie <laughs> but, for this episode. It's my fault, everybody. If you're still listening, <laughs> no, but, here, but the thing, no, no, but the thing worry, that kind of blows me away too um, is that <laughs> uh, two things. One, it's really well animated, mm-hmm. and it's Orson Welles' last role as a film, as, oh, yeah. as, as an role actor, yeah. and he died, I think, what, before Did, the movie came out? A month after he was done recording, I he, believe. Yeah, and just to think that he his last thing he ever did mm-hmm. was a giant planet-devouring ball that farts light. <laughs> man, character actors, man. Character actors, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, well... Going Method into it, it, going into it, it's like I mean I I knew the cast going in, but it was funny mm-hmm. that Steve like when you first this is like your first viewing of this. I've movie. never yeah. seen this movie before. So the the opening credits are basically just all of the all the, high, all the yeah. celebrity names that came up, and it was it was basically Mike. What were you impressed with? I was impressed with the fact that like it was like Scatman Crothers. And Robert Stack, the unsolved mysteries guy. (laughs) And like, so Frank Welker does like, what, like 20 voices in that movie. He doesn't get credit, but the Micro Machines guy (laughs) gets credit. (laughs) Judd Nelson. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like all these people. And then, yeah, I knew about the Orson Welles thing beforehand. Mm -hmm. Because I I always, I always love thinking. so well known. I always think, think about last movies that renowned actors have done. Like, I just recently rewatched. Uh, American Tale 2 and that was James Jimmy Stewart's last role was a burping cowboy dog who burps <laughs> and then like Don Knotts he was the chick he was the mayor turkey and chicken little that's right yeah and he was like it's like these people who are so rena- like re- like Lauren Bacall who's one of my favorite actresses her last thing she ever did was she was a voice on family guy Mm. As like I think she was like hitting on Peter. It's really creepy, mm. but it's like it's it that I always I always think it's so amusing and sad when you see this a, a very renowned actor do not a shitty movie per se, but it's usually an animated movie and they play a yeah. very strange character. In the case of Orson Welles, it's a giant planet devouring robot mm. mm-hmm. that. Well, yeah. like you know, like like Lionel Stander and uh, um, Eric Idle's in this. Yeah, movie. Eric Idle. It's like Eric uh, Idle plays. Or is it Retgar? Retgar. Yeah, Retgar, and uh, we'll we'll He's get a, it. Yeah. Leonard Nimoy is in this. I mean, they they put a nod in the third movie with Leonard yeah, Nimoy voicing. Um, 
And uh, it, it's just funny because oh, who's Megatron voiced by? It was Frank, Frank Walker. That was Frank Walker. Mm-hmm. And then there's that transition where it's from Frank Walker to Leonard Nimoy when he does that transformation. We'll get into it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, the the first scene is we basically see this giant orb from space devouring a planet, which is pretty menacing when you think about it. It's like all of a sudden a planet is destroyed by another planet. And then all of a sudden we're on Earth and we see all all of your favorites, Optimus. Oh, we're actually uh, on, on Cybertron's moons. Oh, on the Cybertron's moons, right. Moon base well, one, moon he, well, here was, here's the thing. It's like I was kind of confused to where everything was in relationship well, they were on, to each other. I know other. they were on a moon base and then they wanted to get in contact with... Autobot City, okay. which is on Earth. Okay. Yeah. Th- <clears throat> All right. Yeah. Please. Steve, this, this was the, it is the year part. 2005. The Trekkies <laughs> Decepticons have retaken their home planet of Cybertron. But mm-hmm. meanwhile, on Auto- on Cybertron's moons, the Autobots plan to reclaim their homeland. Yeah. So so there was. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, How many times have I seen? So really, yeah. It, it was the Decepticons have taken over Cybertron, and the Autobots are trying to get it back. Which doesn't make sense to me because there was always like only like ten Decepticons on the show, <laughs> and like. 40 freaking Autobots, and I think probably yeah. how they took back the home plan is all the Autobots kept coming to Earth, and like, I want to be a sports car! And mm-hmm. Megatron's probably like, no one's on Cybertron anymore! Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's go home and take it back. I'm a gun! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I only knew that Shockwave was like constantly on Cybertron. That was yeah. like the only thing that I... And he appears a couple times. Um, He's pretty much the DD of uh, the Decepticons. Right. So, um... But yeah, so Optimus, basically, they have this plan to take over, but they were spied on by one of uh, one of the other Decepticons. And so um, I, some of them are on this spaceship that are, is about to go to Earth? Yeah, or? pretty much it was like, uh, it was like we don't have enough uh, ener- like energy to power like a uh, attack on the Decepticons. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's go to our uh, n- newly, you know, created city on Earth where we mine all this energy. Yeah, Earth is involved. Yeah. So, okay, that that base that they were on was Which is funny the Earth because base. one of the trailers say it's like, "Oh, like kind of like it all takes place on Earth." It it only the first act. That's right. Really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, that's where everyone is in relationship to each other. And uh, so the Decepticons find this out led by Megatron and uh, they go to this ship and practically just murder. Just this outright, like, one-shot murder all of these Autobots. Let's take the on- picture here. <laughs> um, you're, you're a little kid. Uh, yes. You, you, you watch the first season of Transformers. You love it. Mm-hmm. You, you, you like some of these characters. You bought some of the toys of the characters you like. Yeah. Now you're seeing them on the big screen. Like, yeah. maybe you saw, you know, Return of the Jedi... Some of them that that were are really recognizable. Yeah. I mean, like I I I personally could point out certain ones. Yeah. There was yeah. like they're uh, not they're not full flesh characters. No pun intended. No, uh, but they're toys. They're, they're I mean, yeah. you, kids love them. It's, they, it still means something to them. They're iconic. Um, but so it's like, oh, you're so excited. You're seeing them in a grander scale. The animation looks fantastic. Uh, and yeah, and then you're on the shuttle, and it's led by guys like Ironhide and Prowl, who've been there since the first episode, mm-hmm. and everything kind of you know everything you thought you knew gets changed when Megatron just there is yells a- his battle cry of "Die, Autobots!" <laughs> and they start dying. Yeah. Because in the show, it's like when they're fighting each other, it's just like, you know, back and forth yeah. sort of well, thing. It's like stormtroopers. They're either always missing their shots, or mm-hmm. if they do get shot, they're like, oh, retreat. Yeah. But in this one, they just like... I mean, watching it, it is it is pretty devastating. It's just like watching, like, holy crap. Yeah. Like, Im- almost immediately into the movie as well, yeah. I should add. Oh, Im- it's, yeah. It's like we're not even minutes into the movie, and, and now characters that you recognize are yeah. dying off it's in, not just that random planet in droves yeah as well it's like it, it's pretty and they get more gruesome like prowl is a very this iconic. is like an immediate mood switch it's like it, yeah it, it's like complete 180 you think something nice is gonna happen or like it's just gonna be like a oh hey this mm. is the back and forth sort of thing not like prowl. no no starscream and megatron just outright just, murder but yeah. and and also 
mercilessly. Yeah. Because Ironhide is just like, no! And he's like trying to like beg for mercy or something. And Megatron's just like, we're just trying to stop him with his last bout of energy. And Megatron blows his head off. Uh, Prowl, the police car, gets shot. And just this look of just pain as he dies and like smoke comes out of his mouth and it's yeah it's it's crazy it's <laughs> it crazy because this like, was just a character who's just like this going in good guy like and, going in not having any previous experience with watching transformers i just was sitting there imagine it's being like oh i can't wait to see my favorite transformer on screen and then the first minute you see him you're like hey it's and they're, <laughs> and they're dead yeah like what, i felt bad for every child that was in that theater <laughs> What is it? How many years ago? Thirty years ago? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Jesus. Well, let's well, let's take a step back. Why are all these robots dying? This movie is, of <laughs> course, a marketing scheme to promote a new line of toys. Yeah, they didn't really the, think of it that way. Yeah, the new the new season. So they're like, we got to introduce new characters. Well, what are we gonna do with these old ones that we're not uh, that are being discontinued? Like, oh, well, let's just kill them off. Most of the time, characters just get written off like they just they're never seen yeah they just disappear we don't talk to them again we don't talk about them but this one like they actually thought like well why don't we just do something grand scale just like kill them off and it wasn't just like everyone was like yeah okay uh the director of this movie nelson shin was who worked on the actual series believe it or not was very much against this he was like you you can't kill like well we'll get to it later well yeah because i'm very sure he's very series minded in that sense well not even that he was just he they thought about like the like the the, the they, gruesomeness. They thought about the children, yeah. But they're not like you. You it, have it's these gruesome. kids atta- it's attach themselves to these characters, yeah. You and just so yeah, this whole thing was just to make, but also, make way for these new toys. But and it's they okay did it in because grand ro- fashion. It's okay because they're robots. <laughs> mm. Yeah, oh, that's, yeah, that's never what. That's happened. another thing. It's like every everything in this movie that dies is a robot. Yes, and and that is also a a. Uh, that that is like a uh, uh, what is it S and P? Why not the child? <laughs> Kill the child! <laughs> oh, poor Daniel. Daniel sucks. Oh, Daniel. Hope Daniel. I hope just, and no. Spike. I was just like, what? Oh, okay, yeah, Spike. <laughs> <laughs> and, and those characters are just part of the series as well, but mm-hmm. they're not really characters that you care about. They're just there for relation. They're the human avatar, just to be like kids. Pretty much, you're and that, like Spike. You that's that's hang what happens. That's what happens. Jazz it, and Optimus Prime. And that's that's a mentality of uh, of a, a cartoon show. Anyway, yeah. it's like we need something that will relate to the kids. I never get because no one ever gives a crap about no, the characters. We don't. We don't. And and mm-hmm. we've we've talked about this before. It's usually like you know a grade schooler would look more highly up to a high schooler than it would their own grade. Sure. And a high schooler yeah. would much more likely look up to a college student than a high schooler. So it's like it, it it's it's the it's the progression of age and where they aspire to be something else than what they are so now. So a five year old looks at an eight year old <laughs> and watches robots die? <laughs> Basically. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so uh, moving Well anyway, moving on. Yeah. That, that that was a complete like on the side. Oh, there's so, so many. So robots, options. more robots die, etc. Well, et cetera. now it's like we're in the middle of the first act. They go to Earth, and it's this huge battle yeah, in Autobot a big City, battle. which is like the big home base on this planet. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, it gets into this huge kerfuffle. I yeah. mean, Op- Optimus comes in later. Yeah, to save the to day. pretty much save the day. And uh, there's a there's a really I have to say something. This movie is like just nonstop action. I finally realized and that when when you said that while we we're watching, I finally realized. It. I'm like, yeah, this movie doesn't really slow down. No, it doesn't. It's kind of like and Mad Max, where there's just a set piece every two or three minutes. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the only time that it actually slows down is the part that we're going to get to. Um, it, it, well, mm-hmm. let's just say that Optimus and Megatron have a huge. A uh, one-on-one battle, yeah, which is the epic, you know, well, you, fight. Well, now's a good time to mention. Uh, this is uh, the first time we hear the song "The Touch." Ah, uh, yes, Stan yeah, Bush. Yeah. It's a very iconic uh, song being, at this point. Yeah, now. being very. I mean, I'm very into '80s stuff. Yeah, and I love '80s me music. Yeah, me too. This. The soundtrack is incredible in this. Yeah, misplaced though some of those songs. in some areas. Yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of like we need a soundtrack to go over something, but it's but at the same time, it's a really good soundtrack. It feels like heavy metal where it's just 
Mm-hmm. Well, like they make a movie and then they just litter the background with 80 songs. Yeah, that's true. Well, so. I, don't, I don't know uh, if you guys really picked up on this, but I the score is done by Vince DiCola, who did the Rocky IV score previously. <laughs> yeah, and um, it th- this I what I love <laughs> about the score. I, I love the first of all, I love the way it sounds, but the way it syncs up to the action and the tone and what's going on on screen. I think it's Most, fascinating. Mostly when it's there is fast. action. It's so great. During the action scenes, yes. I would say probably the most. But then there's oh, yeah. moments where it's like, a uh, character is down and this really pumped up music is happening. And well, there's a, there's a lot of arena, arena rock, too. Like yeah. Heavy metal stuff. And yeah, that yeah. was... Uh, it, it, it is a of-the-time yes. sort of thing to do. Um, and, and, I, and I can't really... I can't say there's a whole lot of movies where I can say they've done that, but... If there's any movies that I could give off examples for, this would be one of them. Mm-hmm. So, really, I, I mean, the soundtrack itself is a memorable thing. Yeah. So, really, I, I you know, I have to give them props for it. So, and and there's a lot of moments where it really pumps you up. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you got the touch. Like, whenever that shows up, I'm just <laughs> like, oh yeah, yeah, that's that's. And, a, and it shows up twice in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Quite. A, uh, yeah. Quite. Both incredibly fitting. It's mm-hmm. it's. Like it could have easily just sound like a Danny Elfman Disney score, mm-hmm. but it's it's dare to, co- dare to be stupid is in this Weird Al yeah, song, Weird Al. which which honestly it's like I I can see it I can see it working because Weird Al was a big thing at the time, and um, the 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 thing that is happening at the time is kind of stupid in a way. Yeah, it's silly. So it, it's silly, and it's and it's a really. I mean, it's one of my favorite Weird Al songs, mm-hmm. but when you hear it, it's just like, oh, it's a Weird Al song. It's like trying to fit it in with the rest of the soundtrack, which is like very, it's a kind lot of, of robots serious. Dying. Yeah, I mean, like I, I would say, like there's a lot of moments in the soundtrack where it's like we're trying to take this seriously, and then a Weird Al. I mean, you know, Weird Al to be silly and everything, so it's like that kind of like changes the concept of the soundtrack for a little bit. But also it's like that scene is very Mad Maxy. The characters are kinda of dumb and yeah. you know it's it's trying to trying to fit in the the idea of the scene. So it's it's very fitting for what it is. I, I mean I I personally I just love the sound of it. I, yeah. I'm I'm I really don't have much bad to say about it. Some of it is a little ill uh, paced mm-hmm. but for the most part I mean I would want the soundtrack just listen, oh, yeah. w- just watching the movie I was just like wow I, I really like that song mm-hmm. I like that song Brad I want the soundtrack even, the, even their interpretation of the Transformers theme it's just this heavy metal theme yeah that's my hype song that's a really yeah that, that music <laughs> See, it's it's music that really just like it's supposed to get you charged up. Yeah. So it works. Uh huh. So I'm I'm it, all for it. It's not something like, geez, I saw the Suicide Squad movie, oh, and that was yeah. that was so influenced after like Guardians of the Galaxy came out and how they incorporated that soundtrack. Well, that's the but thing it was about... just like let's just put all these songs. The lyrics go with what these characters are like. It's like this is too much. Slow down. Well, yeah, that's the thing about Guardians of the Galaxy is that it's not only that they're using music like that. It's also sets a tone. Yes. And it really kind of helps move the story forward. Yeah. And also kind of like it, it pumps you up. Uh-huh. So it makes you feel for the movie and it's not just like it, it's not like an ill place. Like, let's get just it? put get it. Let's yeah. just put in as much as we can. Yeah. Like like a lot of movies do. They they get a certain band or something yeah. involved in a movie and they're saying a lot of Disney movies are like that. They say, like, well, let's get Sting involved with this movie, and he'll, like, do the entire soundtrack. And while that's fitting, it's, like, sometimes it's overdone, Mm -hmm. and sometimes it doesn't fit. You know, it... it, I got I immediately think of uh, DreamWorks Home. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Yeah, That's what I was just like. Here's another Rihanna song. Right. It doesn't, like, it doesn't, like, that that would take out of the movie. Yeah, that actually brings me back to like when I saw Home. It's like when I was watching that, and every time a Rihanna song came up, it was like this doesn't feel like it should be there. This doesn't feel it doesn't like feel... how people act. <laughs> and also, yeah. if there's a serious moment in the movie, that's a strong character moment. Yes, they'll just like I can imagine someone in a in a sound editing booth just reaching for the volume control <laughs> and the music, and then just turning it up. So yeah, it's that's another thing. It music. drowns out the rest of the action. And then they lower it back down when things slow down again. Mm-hmm. Are you talking about 
Home. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. The, the, the volume, whenever Rihanna's song came up, they just like ramped it up and everything else was just drowned out. So then in Home, uh, her mother gets taken away. <laughs> <laughs> so talking about Transformers. No, yes. it's, this first act is... I think of it as, hey, if you really love the cartoon, like, this is your scene. Despite seeing more iconic characters who don't even get killed on screen, you just see their dead corpses. Their not dead not to mention, corpses. not to mention there's, a, yeah, a lot of characters that just, all of a sudden it's like, oh my god, Wheeljack! Yeah. It's like, we didn't even see him fight! Yeah. He's just like, died off screen or something. Mm-hmm. It's just like, whoa, that's... Insane. And more characters are gonna get killed off. Yeah. It's budget. Uh, but um, no, the, the the well the well the entire scene when you're what you're talking about is like a lot. There are a lot of like memorable lines as oh, yeah. well that I remember. I mean, just are touted out mm-hmm. because they're so culturally appropriate and and, and it's like Reaganomics. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's like you hear them outside of the movie. I didn't know that's this is where it came from. <laughs> I thought it was always from the show, not the movie. No, no. so. Really, I mean, I, I yeah, there, there's something to say about this movie and it being very memorable, and there's a lot of memorable stuff to it. So, you know, I, I there's not really much. It's speaking of memorable, Optimus Prime versus Megatron, is, and then <sighs> is it's like they start fighting, and then there's like uh, Megatron's last legs, Optimus is on his last legs, and he's just sh- Optimus is like shot down. And Megatron is like carried off by by uh, uh, a sound wave and everything. Yeah. So they retreat, and both are the, fatally wounded. Yeah, yeah, both are fatally wounded. And uh, there's the scene where Optimus is like on his deathbed, literally, literally his deathbed, and he is talking to Rodimus and the new characters. The new none, char- of, none of the old the characters, characters are there. Yeah, here's he, and that's another <laughs> thing. It's like these are these are new characters that are really they haven't really been introduced in the show or anything. Mm-hmm. So I I can see this kind of being also jarring. Yeah, you got to think of how traumatizing that is because hey, everything you knew and loved. Yeah, who are these like, assholes? They're dying, <laughs> and and these are and and look at them. They feel sad about it, and mm-hmm. it's like feel sorry. For them, like no, they weren't in the trenches with us. Yeah. Like I mean, they were for this movie. The the entire, I mean, speaking of emotional, it's like this this movie doesn't personally move me <laughs> in the way that it does other people. Because first off, I didn't see this in th- theaters. I I didn't. I wasn't familiar with the show. But knowing that this scene makes grown men cry, it and and to be fair, if you. Knowing like a character like Optimus Prime and his power and his like uh, intensity of character, the scene is very well paced and very well dramatized. In in, in that, you know, he he's dying. He gives off his final words. He's still very you know he's still very uh powerful and uh and and this like is, like a leader this is the main character yeah the, of the, the main series. the main character is right. getting killed off in the first act and he's yeah. he's dead he's dying he's dead and there's he I mean, he even goes grayscale which is kind of it's like how how much more can we emphasize that this character is well, dead no that's the thing they were already planning for the next season and this was an episode that did happen where he gets resurrected as an out of control zombie <laughs> and he's like Rodimus you have to kill me and it's like because they, they probably at the time they didn't think this was traumatizing and they probably thought like well if we bring him back as like kind of like a corpse you know that must be stopped yeah. that's probably not traumatizing either and then they think about well maybe we should all my, all my circuits will be right back after these messages <laughs> they're robots but they have a spark man yeah and but, also this is the first introduction to that um, matrix of leadership thing yeah that you it, s- it introduces more lore that was just made up for this movie yeah where just it's, pretty much the let, let me take out my chest cavity and mm. like just give you this orange in a here in a take vice. my glowing uh bop it and, <laughs> and put it. This, this is this is basically the MacGuffin of the entire movie this this matrix of leadership thing it's so like we never really know why no it's we, just, we we're don't it, we're, we're just told like you know there's something special <laughs> even even hot rod gives off this weird like off Line where he says, "Like I just feel it in my circuits that, that <laughs> this, this is really stopped. important. 
There's something about it. I just, I just can't put my. It's just a shame on. that the Decepticons happened to attack right after he said that, because otherwise, mm. I, if I was Cuphead, I'd be like, "Go on." <laughs> no, I want to know. Tell me. Uh, you know, it's I'm, I'm good versus evil. Tear of heart. We don't have hearts. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I also love how Starstream just kicks Megatron as That's soon as he's down. It's just like. <laughs> I one, knew Starscream was an asshole, one but that thing, was like... One thing I noticed about this movie, like, yeah, there is some fan service if you were a fan, mm-hmm. you know, you know, unless your favorite character killed off, but if you were a Starscream fan, <laughs> he has a lot of time to shine in this yeah. movie. Like, I, I'm, I'm curious if, Mike, if you got the sense of what who Starscream was. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right away. He's like second banana to yeah. Megatron. He's jealous, but also he's a slimy, you know, little prick. Like he's, <laughs> he's a little bastard. Yeah. And then he gets... And then he, like, throws... Uh, he throws Megatron off the ship. And oh yeah, he, Megatron then he, is like dying. And then like, he and then he wants to have this. Cor- I mean, like, well, then he. Uh, what is it? Uh, the, what is the what is the big Cybertron? Asshole? The big the big asshole. Uh, Unicron. <laughs> Unicron. Unicron. Unicron, <laughs> Unicron <laughs> catches him and says, "You got to get the the thing for me." Yeah, like, Megatron <laughs> is like floating into space, and then Unicron like captures it. And makes apparently, it, and much, and, hmm? like the distance between. Uh, earth and cybertron and unicron it's like i guess it's like driving down the street to go grocery shopping. yeah yeah you know, there's, there's immediate like well, just then, just then, make a left turn on this god if i could be metal su- planet if i could be super geek uh the transformer series did introduce something called the space bridge which was like they were able to warp to you know certain places quicker right. uh so maybe we could just say that's what they were using <laughs> i don't sure. think so um sure that, that's fine no, it was, it was kind of like a nice uh, juxtaposition because you see the death of the leader of the good guys and mm-hmm. everyone's devastated. It's very solemn. And then there, we cut there's, to... There, uh, there actually is a nice um, separation of like who the character, who the good and evil are. It's like uh-huh. the good version, it's just like, oh my God, this is devastating. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I we we just lost our leader. And then with the Decepticons, like, nah, I'm going to be the leader. And Starship <laughs> just, like, pushes their leader outside and just, and, and Megatron is all like, no, I still am okay. Uh, I'm still functional. Yeah, I'm I, a bet. Yeah. <laughs> Which really doesn't make no sense because the Decepticons could fly and well, I guess they could fly through space well, he was and they weak. don't have to breathe. Yeah. yeah, he was weak. He was floating around and then um, he gets he gets taken in the tractor beam and mm-hmm. and has to not even make a deal, kind of against his will. Yeah. To get that, what is that thing called? The Matrix. The, the Matrix. Yeah, and Me- Megatron is basically like, saying, "No, I'm gonna control what I my, my destiny. destiny." But Unicron's just like, "No, you're my slave. Here's your new suit, which is here's new, some new guy. Here's the new Megatron. Here's new toys. He's yeah. he's now Galvatron, and yeah. they introduce. And here are your band of misfits. Uh, I, here, this this guy and I, this guy. I'm curious. Well, I don't know what because Galvatron, who it's apt, honestly, there's who turns turns into the choo-choo Astro oh train. that's astro train. i like i like the purple choo-choo I, <laughs> he, he looks As, like thomas the I, tank I, engine i love that there's a character named astro train they're all inside him who turns too. into well he's a triple changer he turns into a space shuttle right and, and a train don't ask yeah um that somehow he changes in size and he could like house the other uh giant robots but i uh, a robot that turns into a train named astro train that's like my uh, birth name being Big Cartoonist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I just, but, I just, you're gonna be a train. I want to be a race car driver. No, you're gonna be a train. No, <laughs> you were designed to be a gun. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna shrink in size somehow. Oh, yeah, that's another thing about this is that Megatron, Megatron turns, into, turns a into a gun, and he's held by Starscream. Probably, you know, his, the guy who wants to, the kill guy who him. wants to kill him, and I'm, and it's just, I, I, well, whatever. It's it's one of those. I things. remember on forums there used to be people. There would be a thread. Someone's like, I don't get it. <laughs> Starscream fires Megatron in his gun form, but Starscream wants to take over the Decepticons. Why doesn't he just kill Megatron when he turns into a gun? And someone's like, Well, the Thundercracker and Skywarp would probably interfere soon after. And shoot him. <laughs> I'm like, Stop making logic. <laughs> yeah. But that's yeah. just that's, it's a it's a cartoon. Yeah. But yeah, so um, he and then well, um, he may, yeah he he reformats uh, Megatron Galvatron gives him a new voice Leonard Nimoy yeah Leonard gives Nimoy guys. No, I'm curious if you guys caught the major animation error in this scene. Um, three 
Three robots get turned to Scourge and his two huntsmen, the Sweeps. And then there's Cyclonus, the warrior, and his armada, which is, I guess, another copy of Cyclonus. Mm -hmm. Right after that scene, you never see two Cyclonuses ever again. It's just one Cyclonus and then Scourge and three Sweeps. One got lost. (laughs) Yep. On the way back. One just turned like, ah, I like the guys with the mustache more. I'm going to look like him. That is such a nerd observation. (laughs) For someone like me, I would never really guess that. But it's like... it's Maybe not in your first viewing. No, but, but... Yeah. I love uh, Star Stream Scar the Star Screams <clears throat> Coronation. Yeah, it's hilarious. He just, and he just gets turned into ash. <laughs> yeah. That's an, like, and it, he gets a crown. I, yeah. For and, some and reason, big, like that crown, that crown to me is like the most memorable thing because I always remember people like saying, "Like, oh, they're gonna make a toy of the crown," and I'm just like, "What the fuck is what? What is that? You is gotta, that such a big? Thing? Where do they where do they get all their organic material to make a giant robot cape? <laughs> <laughs> you gotta give this There's movie no a lot of credit. Someone is knitting a tiny <laughs> with tiny little na- needles to make a a, a giant. Someone transformed cape. into needles and like <laughs> or. Sewing oh, yes. machine. There, there's there's a, transformer a transformer that's sewing a sewing machine. machine. <laughs> you you, you got to admit this. Um, well, first of all, them having you know the chutzpah to kill off all these characters. Mm-hmm. Like you, you knew it was you knew it was a done deal. Like oh, it's like oh, you remember the original characters? You know, you know how you liked the first two seasons? Well, even Starscream, the the villain that you actually like. Oh yeah, Starscream he dies, dies too. I guess that's the thing, like, uh, Starscream is probably the one constant in that series because he's the only character that actually has some ambition and yeah. goals and. Once he dies, like, oh, what's the point? You know, it's like there's no one... Starscream is dead. (laughs) But you have to admit, though, them having the chutzpah to kill off these characters, they do it in grand fashion. It's not just, you know, just shot in the camera. They give them their moments. They They have these incredibly... I mean, robots just get killed left and right in so many imaginative ways. Mm -hmm. Eaten by shark robots, (laughs) melted down and, like, digested goo. Oh, yeah, yeah. uh, Blasted in the stomach. Sounds like a spike to Almost eaten by a robot kraken. <laughs> yeah, pulled apart, blown apart. Oh yeah. Step heads crushed under so, a door. So anyway, yeah. I'm um so now we have Galvatron who is basically Megatron 2.0. Yes. And now he's going to attack the Autobots again. Well, he kills Starscream, of course. He still Scar- he- well, yeah, he kills Starscream because, like, fuck you, Starscream, you threw me out of a fucking spaceship, you yep. asshole, <laughs> and and deservedly so. That's so Starscream. But, I know. <laughs> That's our Starscream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, but then they go back to Earth and they start firing at the Autobots again, and this time it's like, well, they have to escape, and there's like that big scene where they're. They're taking their two ships off. And this is basically where it's like they split up. Yes. So it's like they're they're off. This is this is the part in the movie where it's like now we're delving into new territory. This is like mm-hmm. like part B of the plot. Yeah, you know? all we knew was Cybertron and Earth. Yeah. So so, so the they take these two ships, they split apart, and they're going to they have they're on two different planets, which are mechanical based. I mean, they're they're both like they're robots, planets. Yeah. So they're not Cybertron. They're just kind of like these other off planets, the underwater planet with metal confusing. sand. Yeah, which which has like a weird um, judicial system <laughs> of well, of, of this five faced well, I always thought core like, being. With, well, I always thought like oh, or just like other alien planets, mechanical too, just because it's Transformers and hey, why not? And, like people yeah, no, it's like, or is it because oh, then you know these characters could get ripped apart, bashed, mm-hmm. and all that because they're robots and we could get away right. with this. Right. I I just find it funny. It's that in that this is like this is the filler part of this yes. movie mm-hmm. where where it's just like okay we need some time to kill and we're we're not we can't just have it to be fighting you know the the Autobots or the Decepticons yeah, this is whatever. when I kind of actually am yeah, oh, mentally check out of this movie a little bit yeah and this is like the, probably the when it, the movie I can slows understand down because, despite yeah, because, it being action all the way through yeah and and there's the there's this one part where it's like a uh, um, cup who is the the old gold yeah guy this uh, I have Autobot stories <laughs> does this the remind you of anything no oh, I, I, don't, I can't remember a thing <laughs> this reminds me of that story oh we need to also talk about the fact that cup is basically the storyteller to the Dinobots 
which are it's, it's pretty much just Yoshi from Super Mario World. <laughs> yeah, split into three yeah. separate dinosaurs. Yeah, four, four, di- four. I, I would say there was a fourth dinosaur. I would uh, say it's uh, mostly Grimlock. It's a yeah, most, Grimlock, is mostly the the Tyrannosaurus. You, you want to know another great thing? Despite this movie looking really good for its time, mm-hmm. there, it's riddled with so many animation errors. As the TV series, oh was. yeah, no, there's I mean, four Dinobots in this movie. There's five Dinobots. <laughs> In, One in of total? them is a Stegosaurus called Snarl, who is in this movie in about three scenes, but they forgot the character existed, <laughs> so he's pretty much not in the movie. All I remember was, like, but, in the cockpit, it's just the pterodactyl, yeah, the, the brontosaurus, and the, and the and Triceratops. Grimlock. And there was a Triceratops. Oh, there was a Triceratops. Right? I mean, that's yeah. not a matter. Triceratops. But then there's, like, you were saying... Snarl. Stegosaurus. But then there's also a long neck dinosaur. Yeah, the, the bronze... There's like, there's, like, six dinosaurs. No, the there's f- Grimlock, who's the T-Rex. Uh, <laughs> Slag, yeah, it, it, who is the Triceratops. The Pterodactyl, <laughs> which is Swoop. And... God, bear with me, guys. Yeah. And... <laughs> And Sludge, who is the uh, Brontosaurus. Yeah. Brontosaurus. I, I know that I know that there's five of them, but it's like, yeah, in every scene you only see four of them. Yeah. Well, there's there's a few scenes. I think there's like three scenes where Snarl is there. But but it gets to the point where it's mm-hmm. just like the, these are just they're, they're side concepts. You know, mm-hmm. it's like they're they're just like kind of pushed aside, and then they show up every once in a while where it's like. It, it gets to the point where it's like, my God, there's so many characters in this. Yeah. And, well, that's and why I gotta s- kill them. You start... <laughs> yeah, we gotta kill them. for new it. ones. You know? No, no, we need to, we need to like, lower the, the, the character. Well, and no one kills the child. <laughs> <laughs> well, as a Transformer fan... The child fan, is like, bulletproof. Just your average Transformer fan would probably just talk about, well, uh, why, so why did they forget to include Snarl? Why did they keep using character models of Thundercracker and Skywarp, even though we saw them die and change into <laughs> new robots? Now working in animation, I realize, oh... Well, it's it, there's someone in charge of designing all these characters, and then it's the board artists. Mm-hmm. They just take these characters and use them. So yeah. they're thinking, well, here's the characters I have to work with. Oh, here's a crowd shot of all the Decepticons. That's true. Let me draw all the Decepticons we have. Not knowing that, yeah, that no one probably tells well, them, oh, don't it, use them anymore. The fact they're that there's dead. like 30 fucking characters in this movie, <laughs> and they all have like not a decent amount of screen time, but enough screen time where it's like, oh, I gotta remember this guy deceased. and this guy, and many of them die, and then mm-hmm. they kind of come back. Well, they, you kind of bring up a good point, Steve, because it's like when you when you're in, especially on a TV show, you're given a pack of characters that are just used for the background, like like yeah. these are background characters, and they're recognizable characters because you'll use them quite often. Mm-hmm. Um, so. I, I, I would assume in the show sometimes it would just be like, okay, I'm going to use these couple characters for this scene because they're filler in for the characters that we're trying to focus yeah. on. So They used to just repaint Starscream all the time. Yeah. They just do, like, oh, here's a... Well, I can't ne- neon I, green star screen. I mean, I can't imagine like for the Ninja Turtles. I mean, you have four characters that pretty much look the same, but they have different weapons and different colored bandanas, and that's pretty much all you can do to to decipher who is who. So, but that's it's at least it's four turtles and not like thirty, <laughs> 30 fucking turtles, right? right and yeah. then and then April and either. and Shredder and yeah. and Splinter. Yeah, yeah. It's like you got two humans. A couple dinosaurs and a <laughs> bunch of fucking robots that all kind of have the same proportions and shape. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And, and some bug robots. And bug robots. <laughs> and one really and feminine, curly, ro- curvy robot. And Eric oh, Idle yeah, girl. robot with a fucking Fu Manchu. <laughs> we're not at that point yet. But um, it all blends together to me in the middle of the we're, movie. We're up to the yeah. giant squid. We're up, yeah. <laughs> He fights a giant, yes, a giant robot squid. Yeah, Cup is basically dismembered by at this point, but uh, he is easily put back together by Hot Rod. Mm-hmm. And uh, all you do is just it. The, oh, and here's something funny that we noticed: like when they're underwater, the animation acts as if all of the metal, uh, all the metal base of the underwater is supposed to be sand, but it's like it's it's. Just metal. It's metal and chrome, like flat. Brown. So at some point they probably thought like, oh, so there's going to be sand on nope. this planet. <laughs> and it's like a beach. They're underwater. N- nope, that's that's gotta, gotta metal. Love that 1080p Blu-ray quality. <laughs> I've and, never noticed that. Before. Yeah, and and there's also a lot of moments where we notice the the, the edge of the cell. The edge of the cell has disappeared. <laughs> so or 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 the end of where they decided not to paint anymore. Yeah. <laughs> That's like remember we seeing we saw the one of the 
the uh, one of the cuts of what was it, Troll in Central Park? Yeah. And there's a whole scene where the characters are only like a third of the way into the screen and <laughs> yeah. they just disappear in pieces. Yeah. Yeah, that's hilarious. And it just becomes a foot, like a yeah. floating foot before it disappears. But this is where we get to the part of the movie where it's like, oh, let's just come up with some new scenarios for these characters. We have pretty much the, the Quintesson planet, which is... Uh, they, they don't do a clear enough job explaining this, but these are the underlings of Unicron... And I guess they just hang around and it's like, oh, have you met Unicron before? Oh, well, you're guilty of not getting killed so wait, by they're, Unicron. So wait, they're they're connected to Unicron in uh, some way, like 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 that floating head thing. Yeah, that, the like, judge. That, it's really? Many, yeah. Uh, there was like there was absolutely no indication that they were connected it's, to Unicron. It's a, it's a throwaway line. Huh. Then I then I must have missed it because it's like, actually, I I could be. No, you know what? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm wrong. Mm. I am wrong because I, because uh, Kranix, the guy who escapes in the beginning of the movie, is like, oh, these are the Quintesson, uh, the Sharktacons, and the cool masters of the Quintessons. My planet was destroyed by Unicron. Like he didn't take a break. It's just dropping all these names. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And Cup and Hot Rod are just like everyone else, and they're like, who, who, yeah, what? who's they, what? they all who's they, Unicron? All I remember is them asking like, who's Unicron? It's like he's a thing that destroyed my planet. No, I'm the last one. I'm <laughs> Kal El. I'm supposed to be the Superman. Uh, yeah, my mistake. The Quintessons are just a weird backwards planet. And yeah. Oh god, I don't want to get into the, the canon that they created for them in the cartoon. That's that's a, <laughs> that'll be for another day. That's a can of robot worms. I don't want to because <laughs> there probably are robots. But yeah, they're probably they're, hot rod fishes with robot worms. Yeah, so. but the, but they're being sentenced in this weird. I mean, Cup and Hot Rod are being sentenced in this weird uh, judicial system. If you're innocent, you're thrown to the yeah, which shark it, robot. It's, it, it's opposite planet. Yeah, yeah. It, it's the uh, uh, um, what? Is, what is it? The Bizarro. Yeah. Up <laughs> means it's, down. Down means up. Topsy turvy. Everything And then there's like a robot with tentacles that just constantly. I guess he's like the lawyer or something. He's like, ah, what do? You, how do you find these defendants? And, and then he's like, they're spare, innocent. Spare me this mockery of justice. Innocent, and then they drop into like a pool of piranha robots in urine. In urine, yeah, <laughs> robot Yellow urine. Water um, melted. So, butter. but but I mean, Hot Rod and Cup eventually they they fight their way out of this, and then the dinosaurs well, come. Oh in. yeah, because with the help of a new friend, and this makes. Sense. Oh, I hate this character. Wee- Tiny, Wee- unintelligible pink thing. Wheelie. What is? What's this character? Wheelie. Wheelie? Like Papa Wheelie. That's Wheelie? That's Wheelie. What the fuck? I, okay, for the longest time I was just like, who is this little shit? I've never seen this well, before. It's, it's really confusing because he's just thrown, it's, he just happens to be on this planet and, and he talks in like rhymes. It's like, Wheelie confusing. <laughs> oh, God. Shut up. Yeah, uh, he, yeah, he talks in rhymes and he's very high pitched and I, I... Voiced by Frank Walker. Yeah. <laughs> but... Here it's it's so weird because he apparently is an Autobot, but no one knows who he is. Yeah, that was a th- that was funny because like the first time I saw him, I was just like, oh, he's an Autobot because he has that icon on Wheelie his chest. Wheelie really kind of represents the change in what they came up with characters mm. after this movie for season three. Because when you think about it, like Transformers is something completely different than what uh, you know people that watch cartoons in the West remember because they grew up on Looney Tunes and Hanna Barbera and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So there's still like this cartoon mindset. Yeah. So instead of coming up with like you know like Cup oh. like Cup is an interesting enough character. It's like oh he's a grizzled war vet. And then you have yeah. Blur. He talks really fast. And then there's Wheelie. He talks in rhymes. And Rickgar. He talks like he's an infomercial. <laughs> it's like what the. It's it's very. And he talks like a laser. That's what he's. Saying. It's very Hanna Barbera. Which is funny too, because talking about the sound effects, like in the beginning, there's like that crunching noise, like <laughs> yeah, where the, pl- the, the planet is eating another planet. The planet, planet is eating a planet. And it's just like a Hanna Barbera chewing, <laughs> gomping Which sound kind of effect. Like, now, honestly, it's like you notice that, and it's very, yeah. it's very obviously a cartoon sound effect. I was waiting for That's one why... of them to just go yipe and just like <laughs> do like that little scramble foot coconut sound that Fred uh, Flintstone makes when he's about to. The run laser away. noises are that usual like that th- weird thump sound oh, from thwomp. God, if only <laughs> when Prowl was shot, he just let out like a tomcat. Leather lung scream. Mm-hmm. So, um, shark anyway, bots. Where are we? Okay, the shark. Di- dino- dinosaurs convince the shark <laughs> robots to go after the five faced floating robot. So there's, there's less of them, and they don't seem to fight much. And yeah. The shark cons are like, sure. <laughs> That's how you do a mutiny. Just yeah. real quick. It's like, 
fight them instead. Yeah, like, so okay. but they basically they find like a ship that is a corkscrew. Yeah, a corkscrew ship that just like kind of spins around. It looks like one of those. You ever see like the videos on YouTube where they pour molten mercury down an anthill and then they dig it out <laughs> oh, and then it's just this beautiful designed <laughs> metal thing. It just looks like a, a dolly esque <laughs> ant hill. Something so cruel and horrid makes something so beautiful. <laughs> yeah, and and yeah, so they find this giant scorch, but they go on. Yeah, they're on the junk planet. And oh yeah. Uh, mean, meanwhile, on this the is, other planet, this is where Ultra Magnus, who's the current leader of the Autobots, he has the Matrix. Yeah, uh, and he gets fucking. Well, the Decepticons track them down, and he gets it worse than Optimus Prime. He explodes. He fucking explodes <laughs> into bits and pieces. I really enjoyed seeing your reactions to that uh, because it was. I was just it laughing was, at it, Andrew. It, well, well, it well, was originally. Well, here's okay. Here's the thing. When he blew up, I was just like, "Oh, they destroyed another character," and and then like later on, it's like they meet the Junkions or something, yeah. or, um, and uh, Retgar. Retgar, yeah, Retgar, voiced by Eric Idle, who makes my head pound. I still can't understand Every what time he's he says a word because it it, it was like bam 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 bam. bam. It's yeah, this weird go, like news at 11. It's this, hurry, hurry, hurry. Yeah, and it's we, this weird like <laughs> laser <laughs> pulse yeah. noise every time he says something. Uh-huh. So it's like it, it's like pronouncing your bees, you know, the biscuits are <laughs> bought the bracelet for Belinda's birthday. But, yeah, it's the but, Autobots. But if that was like a piercing laser into your jaw yeah. you know it's like it's Ooh. it's like ow ow oh. that really hurts please stop talking eric <laughs> it, um but later on it's like there's that mad max scene where it's dare to be mm-hmm. stupid they're being chased by which is a really fun scene um they're being chased mm-hmm. by down by but then because they look like a post like they're post-apocalyptic looking robots yeah like they look on, like a, on a junk gang. planet yeah. which which are just you know they're they're a gang of motorcyclists mm-hmm. Uh, a, they're a biker gang. They're mm-hmm. they're and they're after things because they don't understand it. So, um, but then Hot Rod comes to the planet and he's with Cup and the Dinobots and they give off. They they were saying like the oh the universal greeting, greeting which is what was it? Ba weep grana weep ninibon. <laughs> And immediately I was things like Una Igna Shawa Neha from the Hanna Barbera And probably the most yeah the the biggest moment of secondhand embarrassment mm-hmm. in this movie comes when they're just it just cuts into this big dance number. Oh yeah, yeah. It's it turns into an Ewok dance. It's like yes. the Ewok celebrates yep, like yep. Yep, yep. Yep, yep. Yep, yep. And so here's the part that got to me. They put Ultra Magnus back together. Just they and it's just normal. It's just like Oh, here's your. Uh, we're sorry. Here's your buddy. Here's your buddy back. And Optimus Prime got just like shot in the belly. Yeah. yeah. So Optimus Prime <laughs> gets shot in the fucking stomach, and he lo- he's. They say that his wounds, his, are, his wounds fatal. are too fatal. He can't make it. And I can forgive the scene where where Hot Rod puts Cup back together because his arm and it's leg like an is arm somewhere. And a leg. Yeah. yeah, it's an arm and a leg. Okay, I, I can understand that. He puts that back together. I was like, uh, yeah, I feel good. I can feel like I can punch a Decepticon already. <laughs> so and and then there's a scene where Ultra Magnus is in just tiny little pieces, and Rekar he, he is... explodes. Rekar and the Dunkion just put him back together. He's fine and back to normal they they just shine him up he's fine they even and polish i'm like him. yeah they polish him and i'm just like what what take them back to earth and do this to prime right now yes we need him. what do they do with prime I, yeah, where, Cycle him? where is he buried <laughs> well actually they they just uh, dropped him in the ocean I, I know what they do but i don't need to say <laughs> uh no did no. they eat him <laughs> 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 Robots need food. Um, no, it's funny because uh, with the whole the you know we talk about like I feel like the theme of this movie has been robot deaths. Yeah, Magnus was supposed to get it a lot worse than he did. Like apparently they were supposed <laughs> to like rip off his limbs one by one, just brutally murder. Like what is wrong with these people? Wow. I, I honestly think uh, it's okay. It's I, called having your cake and eating it too. I just think we I, can't do it to a real person. So yeah. if we could do it to a robot, it's okay. Yeah, I think a lot of the, I think a lot of these producers are full of shit. And they said, oh, we didn't know people react like this. Like, well, no. well, here's you're, the thing. Like, smoking we can't... cigarettes in like, the 80s and like, oh, want to be well, fucking well, awesome if his arm gets ripped off and then he's beaten with it. Well, here's the thing about that is that when you're on, when you're on a show and you're talking to uh, S&P, 
standards and practices. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, so we have like a group of things that can just be demolished, whatever, for for these main characters. Like for the Ninja Turtles, it was the foot soldiers. We can't have them be human characters. But if they're robots... We can see them get cut up. We can see them, like, you know, lop off their head and, like, throw it because, you know, we, we established that they're robots. They're not real. Mm. They're not real human beings that can have blood and stuff like that. That's why Samurai Jack, everything that Samurai Jack slices open is a robot. Yeah. Even if it's, like, an orga- organic looking thing, if they slice it open, it has to have robot parts inside. And it's got it. a spark and then blow up. Yeah. It's, and, and, and then that, oil everywhere. That basically, yeah. <laughs> That would basically be fine for that. So I I would assume that it's just like, oh, well, you're just going to have us like be able to kill robots all we want? We're going to make it as disturbing as possible. <laughs> so I'm, I can assume like they had plans to just kind of like torture the fuck out of Ultra Magnus. This would be like, no, give me your face. And, you know, it's just like... <laughs> <laughs> the, the robot skin and just the skeleton. <laughs> I mean, I mean... Think of the death of the With the piranhas, it's like... Part. With the piranhas, there's, there's a moment where uh, uh, Dinobot like punches one in the face and his like entire mouth just, just shatters. Yeah. And then there's another one where it just like slices the other one in the face. Like, oh, so, geez, sorry, Frank. Breaks it down just, just like, robot skeleton yeah, yeah so i i they took full advantage of it i i i would i would think it's like let yeah it's it's taking our cake and eating it it's it's, mm-hmm. it's basically just like oh you're not gonna let us do this well we're gonna do this yeah so uh and it's like well you didn't say that we couldn't do it so there you go it's creative friction yeah <laughs> you're given an obstacle and you find a very creative which, way to get around it yeah which which makes things ultimately i i would think that it would make things a lot more creative because it makes you think outside of the box it's how like, many ways can you kill a robot yeah. <laughs> melting them sounds like a YouTube be eaten. yeah but either way, that entire scene just made me go like, like you, you. I was just lost like, lost it. Right. Yeah, That's I, I, I really was just like, okay, so if you're going to kill off a very memorable character like Optimus Prime and have that in like wonderful scene where the, all the other robots are just like, oh my god, Optimus is dead, and what are we gonna do now? And then you have another scene where another robot gets just. Blown to smithereens. We've just seen tons of robots die. Mm-hmm. Robot guts. And then all of a sudden, he's put back together. He's fine. He's still part of the cast. I oh, by the way, I Ultra lost. Ultra Magnus will return. By by the way, I I lost the Matrix of uh, <laughs> the the thing. Oh yeah, Ultra Magnus, the voice of uh, the guy from Unsolved Mysteries. Robert Stack. Because <laughs> I remember my my mom used Every to watch time we Unsolved hear Mysteries him. that used to be on like Lifetime Channel, yeah. and my mom used to watch Unsolved Mysteries, and Robert Stack used to be the host. Mm-hmm. And I remember that Unsolved if, Mysteries. If you've seen this person, please call that, the Unsolved Mysteries. The only other mysteries. thing I can think of is, is airplane. You right? squeal. What? He's in the first airplane. Or is it... Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like, those are the... Two I think he's in both airplanes, actually. Probably, yeah. Those are the two things he's, I could He's lift. such a... The movie. He's a recognizable voice, and he's a very well-known actor as well. So... And the, the funny thing about things like Airplane and that is that they chose to give these hilarious roles to very serious actors be, because that... It helps... It helps the joke. Mm-hmm. So if you give like very serious actors and give them really funny things to do and say, it makes the joke even funnier. And then you have someone like, let's have Scatman Crothers play a robot called Jazz. <laughs> Which is, you know... A funny I mean, story about uh, Scatman, because, uh, you know, like these guys actually watch the show. But one time he came in a recording session, he just, of course, he's the only, um, he's the only uh, African-American voice actor on there. He's like... Oh, can someone tell me what my robot looks like? Like, did, it does it look different from all your other robots? Like, n- <laughs> no, it pretty much looks the same thing. It's like you got you you gotta be kidding me! <laughs> I'm, I'm voice a robot that looks exactly the same as all you other guys. It's hilarious. The, the, watching, uh, I, I watched like a, a, a doc, DVD doc. bonus feature mm-hmm. of just all the voice actors, and all like older voice actors, like guys that were doing yeah. stuff like in the seventies and the eighties. It's just yeah. a bunch of old old men just getting together. It's like they're playing. It was poker a bunch of old guys and... like in charge of the show. I yeah. mean, yeah, it was. Uh, it's it's really funny 
to know that these shows were run by by people who were just they wanted to make a cartoon and they mm. this was how they could do it. They also wanted to make money. Yeah. Well, yeah. They I mean, to make like, money. it's a lots job. Lots and lots it's of It's a money. job. It is. You know, so. But it's just it's kind of weird what like people will have sent you know will be sentiment towards you know mm-hmm. all these years later. It's, There's something admirable t- about it. Yeah. It, it, it's, it. I can honestly. I mean, I, I digress. We wouldn't. We wouldn't be talking no. about. This. We we oh. we honestly. Yeah. I mean, we wouldn't still be it's, talking about it, and we still wouldn't be having toys and, it's not and like, shows it's not about like, it. You know, it's not like the Care Bears has this kind of power. Thing. Well, I mean, there there is an audience for everything. I yeah. would not I mean, like this. Not, you know? not like this. No. But um. <laughs> So oh so where, after, after where are that, we? Lionheart, <laughs> did, Lionheart didn't die in the first act of the second Care Bears movie, <laughs> and they take his they take his heart out of his chest. And <laughs> oh Lionheart, god. he has oh my god, he actually has a lion for a Just heart. Imagine like the Care Bears movie it, if it was like that. Okay, we need to make an entire new set of characters. And let's kill off the other Care Bears. We just. We, isn't all what they did in those movies is they just introduced new characters that were never like well uh, well I do them. know that um, in terms of the Care Bears oh, we really the Care Bear cousins yeah, yeah. the Care Bear cousins were introduced in one of the movies are okay. we really talking about Care Bears yeah I get, we are because when we you are. break this down it's freaking toys so. then there's fucking fucking p- flying ponies and <laughs> horn ponies and oh, but then they go there's regular diversity. ponies listen they you, gotta get their sparkle points you and have, they don't get their horn <laughs> Yeah, you have to give these shows some credit because toys are they, they make a big impact to kids. Because not everything like lasts like like people like people remember Street Sharks for its lore, you know. It's, <laughs> but yeah. lore, they're fucking <laughs> land sharks. I I love talking about Street Sharks because every time Street Sharks comes up, I keep thinking about how horrible those characters have it. Yeah, and they're just like. Oh my god! But like, there's, sh- there's stuff like that. There's stuff like whatever that toy line was with the dinosaurs and people rode them and shot lasers. Oh yeah. And then there's stuff like the Transformers where, holy crap, they're still making Transformers stuff. Yeah. yeah. There's like the comics for the older audience. There's like the new TV cartoons. I have the comics. I, I I read them every the once. Michael in a Bay while. movies for people don't realize <laughs> you know, you know, what a good movie is. You know? Yeah. Oh, so. Now, and what planet are we on now? At this point, <laughs> we're on we're we're on the planet of junk, you know. Ultra Magnus. Oh yeah, no, better, but they but go to Cybertron because after Ultra Magnus, well, Galvatron took the the yeah. Matrix and like, oh, where is he? And for some reason, uh, Retgar knows that he went to go see Unicron. So I'm like, oh, we got to destroy Unicron. So because we apparently saw it on they TV. know where Unicron is, but they because they saw it on TV. Yeah, so and then they sw- it's Unicron swallows up Galvatron. Well, oh yeah, he like he like well, Galvatron oh, is oh he transforms he basically thinks he that he needlessly transforms from a fucking giant ball asshole that can actually destroy planets to just an asshole to just an asshole <laughs> to just to just to just a giant robot yeah and it's like when when basically if it ain't Orson broke, Welles is a if, robot if it ain't Dracula. broke don't fix it but but tell me this. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me that's not an amazing sequence of animation. It is. Oh, it's amazing. It is. It but is I mean, fun. like you talk about all those. You, 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 you were wowed just by that first instance of you know Unicron in planet form just going by the screen in perspective. Yeah. But yeah. the thing is, like, if you are, if you, if you're a giant <laughs> planet that eats other planets and you haven't lost. I mean, like they they blew up a ship in his mouth and it didn't even leave a scratch. Yeah. With, if it's if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Like I'm gonna destroy this planet. I could just eat this planet like any other fucking planet. Instead, I'm gonna transform into a needlessly giant robot. It's and kind of vulnerable. It's, and it makes him more vulnerable, and he's just punching the planet now. Yeah. If only someone told Unicron that, and he'd still be right. Like, today. what made him say, like, you know what? I think for this time around, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna not be a giant I, asshole. Well, as I was watching it, but I'm I thought be a giant it, asshole. <laughs> yeah. And destroy your planet. Well, when I was my watching hands. it, I was basically like in my mind, I was kind of like trying to figure out the logistics of this. For me, oh, it was don't, like don't you hurt your head? No, yeah. no, I know, but I, but I mean, like for me, it seemed like Unicron. Cybertron is too big for even Unicron. So yeah. it's like Cybertron is like bigger than Unicron. So like, it's like, well, I gotta break this down. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, so, that's so, how I interpret it. I'm, and, gonna, I'm gonna be so fucking he was, constipated. And he by was the end still, of this, so he was still really pieces. fucking up the planet. I mean, he was like, I guess baby robots and, and you, children. You robot. wanna know some shit though? Yeah. 
the um, and well, this has become a part of the Transformers lore later. But this was uh, the part of the original idea for this movie is Cybertron is also a giant robot planet. Like, yeah. I mean, it's a planet that 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 is the home to giant robots. But it is <laughs> it's just like Unicron. It is a planet that turns into a giant robot because I think. It's this weird religion thing where there was original, the original, the first twelve Transformers, and two of them are Unicron and mm-hmm. Cybertron, which is known as Primus, right. and pretty much it's like it's God all, and Satan. It's all in that's that arc. It it's all in that arc thing that I have. That's, so maybe you could chalk mm-hmm. it down. It's like, oh, well, maybe Unicron can't yeah. Cybertron, <laughs> but he sw- but he does swallow Galvatron. Just oh yeah, he just him, he, and he, picks, goes he picks him off of his shoulder, robot <laughs> like, like a little like a little fly, and just like kind of like swallows him like. Just yeah. down the gullet. And then he's in there, and then... Down the hatch, Galvatron. They, we should mention at this point that... Uh, I don't think we ever mentioned that Galvatron was like, oh, I hate being controlled by this dude. I'm going to take the Matrix and try to oh, use Oh, yeah, defeat. yeah. We um, kind of just... Unicron, you like... dummy. <laughs> I guess kind of, like, controls him. Yes. Um, but also, Galvatron is like... I, I, I still want to keep calling him Megatron, because it's like... I, I know he's Megatron. Yeah. So he, he he'll basically... He'll always be Megatron. He's always going to... He'll always be Megatron in my heart. He he's he thinks that this matrix is going to like control Unicron or something. He yes. thinks it's like ah, now I have it, but he's still kind of like controlled by Unicron. How do I do this? Yeah, he's like he trying to like use it like a, a, a Rubik's cube. <laughs> it's like, yeah. yeah, just eat that damn orange. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and then but so they they started the uh, the Autobots start attacking, and mm-hmm. then they somehow break into inside of. Hot Rod gets inside of... Well, they all oh, get inside Because they ride the yeah, giant they ride, screw right through his eye. Yeah, they, yeah. All, they go in through the eye. And apparently other Autobots and Spike are alive, and they're going to be digested in this giant... Giant vat. Giant vat. With of, a lid. <laughs> and we who, see... And we, who, and we why see, would he have a lid? <laughs> the lid? For the sake of closing it, so he could save the day? Well, you know, just in case he just... He gets like... Uh, it takes up a lot of energy on, man. Sometimes <laughs> you gotta preserve that goo. Well, <laughs> they, oh my god! You, 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 you can't let it dry up. You gotta put a cup on it. <laughs> well, you know when he has acid reflux, it's just like you gotta close that. Just the just, souls and screams of ro- <laughs> many robots. Yeah, yeah, you thought like the oh, there's even a moment where he's like holding his stomach and he there's like an a, audible a, a, like gurgle. It's like oh, oh, I have a stomach ache. Oh, too many robots. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Just I want to. I, I, I wish. I wish. I, a, I wish. I ate a Decepticon that didn't. Agree I wish with Orson me. Welles just went. Oh my tummy. <laughs> Gay. I wish they just recorded him like when he was recording. Like oh, I ate too much today. Like, <laughs> Where are you using that? <laughs> um, no, like, if you thought the gruesome oh, robot deaths were over, there's a French fry in my beard. <laughs> there's a letter John cube stuck in my beard. <laughs> uh, if you thought the gruesome deaths were over, luckily these were just random incidental characters. Women well, actually, and ch- women and children robots. <laughs> well, actually, one of the characters that falls right before Skype is actually a, a Skype. I'm sorry, not the program. Uh, Spike. One of the characters that falls right before him is a named character. That you don't see fall in, <laughs> and you don't see him ever again. So, like, did he die? And of course, there's probably a million YouTube videos now, probably at this point, talking about <laughs> did Beachcomber actually They all die? had names. Let's talk about <laughs> it. They all, ha- they all had lives they at one die point. In this Steve. Goo. You gotta think of how elaborate. Like, one thing that blows, <laughs> that blows my mind with this movie is just all the functions that are going on here. Like, there's a bunch of hooks on these. these Vines yeah, there's very like you them. know like the thing sort of where it's like these these tentacles that start clamping on a thing. Unicron is truly a big playset. Yeah, it's like here's the goop where you could drop in your transformers <laughs> to melt and die. Here's the crazy cranes that chase after him. Here's the river. You know, it's like <laughs> Unicron is a big playset. Yeah, and yes, like I mean they didn't necessarily make a toy like that, but, but you gotta admire. Like all the thought that went into it. Yeah, but anyway, Unicron the, is Discovery Zone. The kid, it's just a big oh Discovery my god, zone. no wonder why I love him. <laughs> well, anyway, the kid, the kid, <laughs> the kid in his Help exo me, suit. Daniel, I'm gonna fall into the ball pit. It's gross. Someone pee. Ew, my hair there. is my hair is caught in the roller slide. <laughs> <laughs> Every, every oh, time I go to a Discovery Zone, there'd always be a girl going, ow, ow, ow. <laughs> and then there would be a person who works there who's like, all right, give me a minute. And then they have to like get the hair oh. out. I want to see Jazz playing the, the alligator games. Like, man, this is rigged. <laughs> Wait a minute. 
<laughs> Shit. Jazz, you've been alive this whole time and just playing games? Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> Try the pizza. It's 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 edible. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's like an entire like Chuck E. Cheese like stage inside of you to Kron singing a yeah. song like You're gonna get digested. You're gonna be in Soundwave is in there, he's like he provides the music. <laughs> Oh my god. You're gonna be digested. Happy birthday, Timmy. <laughs> <laughs> Happy eighth birthday. <laughs> oh Here is god. lukewarm pizza and You're Coca-Cola. the birthday, you're the birthday, you're the birthday, boy or girl. <laughs> How old are you? Actually, and that's great. <laughs> let's sing a song. Oh, don't get me on the Simpsons uh, tangent. All right, let's go, let's go. Yeah, but, well, we're we're kind of wrapping this up now. Yeah. There's a big battle inside you and a cron between Galvatron between and Galvatron Hot and Hot Rod, who basically ends up becoming the new leader because he, he because he's, he's able to grab the Matrix from him, and it this is because the, the whole time which like, is, oh the Matrix is supposed to, there's a prophecy it's supposed to, so, an Autobot will rise from our ranks mm-hmm. and use the power of the Matrix to light our darkest hour which Optimus and, didn't even know he, he was just like here yeah, I heard Mag- this and Magnus was like this is the moment right this is pretty dark right this is some gruesome shit <laughs> and, I love that I obviously love that moment I was like this is it right it's really dark speaking I of I mean I'm gonna die well, right? speaking of seeing Ultra Magnus and me just saying shit there's two curse words in this room. Oh yeah, there's yeah. there's like shit. And, you're like, and then every boy in the audience is like, oh, I love this movie. Okay. Can I say that now, mom? Yeah, like <laughs> me being a super teenager, when I would like watch, you know, like bootleg copies of sub Dragon Ball Z, and there would be curse words. I'm like, oh, they curse in cartoons. I got like <laughs> the stuff I like is mature. I was when I was a kid. I I literally freaked out when in the secret of Nim, one of the when he goes damn yeah he goes, like, i was gonna damn. say was like, and they lost their they lost they almost lost i think they lost their g rating because of that damn because of that one damn yeah wow yeah, i'm surprised but, with Nim. that's but fine. they wanted a pg rating for this movie they wanted to push some things just so it didn't seem so it's much a pg like a movie. yeah it's pg it's pg yeah oh just... come on man robot deaths <laughs> robot. but yeah so they, f- they he gets the matrix he becomes he opens it robot up Jesus. rodimus prime yeah, he becomes Rodimus Prime. Rodimus Prime. What do you think of that name, Mike? Rodimus? Rodimus. It sounds like a basketball player. <laughs> <laughs> Rodimus Prime. Three-pointer. Rodimus Prime. It kind of sounds like a sex toy to me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Try my Rodimus Prime. <laughs> It's filled with the Matrix. Uh, oh, I, I've never been... Bop it, it vibrates. Twi- Bop never... it, twist it, pull it. <laughs> It's a ridiculous name, but unfortunately, like Hasbro doesn't necessarily have the rights to the name Hot Rod because it's such a generic term. Oh yeah, that's... so he's mo- in like in all the other s- stuff that he's used. Who the hell in. owns it? Big Daddy Roth? Like who owns? Probably. <laughs> he's referred to as Rodimus. So I mean, it makes sense if you know the backstory. Big Daddy like, Roth. What the hell's a Rodimus? I don't know what part of my car. Ignatius that is. Rodimus Thaddeus. Well, what's you ultra? Know? Well, what is Ultra Magnus? I don't. What's I mean, a, what's a Magnus? Yeah. What's. <laughs> I mean, maybe they couldn't. Say they, he's an he was, his he's real a, name was Magnet. It's he's like an, Ultra he's Magnet. A, he's an Asterix character. He's one of the Romans. <laughs> Magnum Mag- Opus. Magnanimous. Magnanimous. Well, anyway, he opens this up. It it begins to destroy the insides of he, uh, well, he throw, Unicron. He throws uh, Galvatron out of Unicron's ass, he, he which right, I think he, is made out of paper mache. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah he, he gets launched through that wall, and then he, he pretty much takes they go out, out of his, his other eye. Yeah, <laughs> and I love how he, he pretty much releasing the Matrix was like putting it was like the Mentos and and <laughs> Diet Coke. It just it's everything Alka-Seltzer. bursts from the inside out like an Alka Seltzer. Yeah. Like he's like he's it's like a gus it's like a gus it's like if you put an alka seltzer in a goose and it'll blow up because <laughs> oh goose goose geese can't burp. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty much that, and they're oh, all like, "We gotta get out of here. Let's thing. drive out of this robot." It's, it's, it's an amazing sequence. They, they bla- Unicron yeah. Unicron is freaking the hell out. He's exploding from the inside. And one of his instincts is to just remove his ankle. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just... Yeah, itchy. it's like it's like oh god, itchy, so itchy. itchy. It's like and he just like removes his leg. It's just like a, like a boot. Just yeah. like, like, uh, I gotta take it off. Oh wait, there's nothing underneath. Fuck! And then, then he explodes. explodes. He's just his a head. head goes flying. His head goes flying off to like the ending is really quick. Of right after that blow up, like the movie ends like forty five yeah. seconds after that blow up. We did it. Yeah. We, oh yeah. Rodimus Prime is now the leader, which uh, unbeknownst to he climbs to, Pride Rock and roars. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. well, the thing about this is that Optimus Prime was wrong. <laughs> you know, he's like he thought 
Ultra Magnus was going to be like the. Well, he didn't say like Ultra Magnus. It's your. It's like you're the destined one. He just said like I'm Ultra just Magnus. A you take over. It's yeah. like, I'm not uh, and you, hold on to this taken. thing. Yeah, hold well, on. Well, didn't didn't you see the symbolism of when Optimus first dropped the Matrix when he died and and Hot Rod picked it up and everything glowed, but then he was like, oh, here. and then Ultra Magnus like, kid, what the hell are you doing? Give me that. <laughs> and everything just goes back to normal. Yeah. Well, e- either way. Things are back to normal. Cybertron is in disarray. Yeah, I wouldn't say normal. Just like well, Cybertron looks like it's just desolate. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's it's robot Swiss cheese right now. Yeah, it, I mean it's been stepped on by a giant robot jerk. We did it. Then you pan out, and there's no other robots. Come on. And the then the robots. head of Unicron basically orbits around Cybertron, like a yes. creepy moon that stares like, at you. <laughs> and then we start the credits, like Transformers, which is a great song. Oh I, my, I will not. I guess I, I it's a great it. song. I yeah, I, I, I do like. I do like. It that. gets you amped. It, it they they re, yeah, like I said, they reuse a lot of songs twice, but they use them at. The appropriate. Yeah. I love watching characters <laughs> die every three minutes. That's what I liked about this movie. All right, so Mike, I'm going to hand this over to you because you have not seen this movie before. I honestly have only seen a little bit of it. I only know bits and pieces of it. From But from a perspective of someone who has not seen it, not familiar with Transformers, it, what do you think of this it movie? It was... It made... Uh, it's a weird way of saying it. I was confused... <laughs> But it still made sense. Like, I still understood everything that happened. Mm-hmm. There was just a lot of characters, and I'm trying to keep track of who is who. And I, since I never saw the show, these but are all But almost in a way, it's like you don't have to keep I track of the characters. Have to, yeah, I mean, like... Because yeah, they get killed off. Like, I would... You just no, have to focus on the main ones. Like, it's like, oh, those are the main ones that I should focus on. I'm going to be honest. When we were going to do this show, going in, I was like... I'm probably just going to be, and I pretty much did for most of this episode. I just stood back and let you guys talk yeah. because I don't know anything about Transformers. I know, I know, like I said, I know who Optimus Prime and Megatron are. I'm good at mm-hmm. pretending I know about yeah. Transformers. Yeah, but then like, yeah, I mean, I, watching the movie, I understood everything. I right. understood what the motive was. There's a giant fucking robot eating other eating giant planets, and they have to stop it. And there's all this bicker, you know. The, you, the, you, you understand I understood the it. menace. It was confusing as fuck. And things, <laughs> a lot made little to no sense yeah. in many ways. But I still was like, you know, it made as much sense as a fucking Don Bluth movie, <laughs> storytelling wise. Yeah, I, I could tell. That's true. You know, I like, you know, I liked, uh, what was what was the the grizzled old? Cup. Cup. I like mm-hmm. Cup. You know, I liked the, how much of a bastard Starscream was. <laughs> yeah. I liked... I like the giant asshole. <laughs> I like the fact that there was a giant Where's asshole. Where's the giant space asshole? <laughs> yeah. Suck. 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 <laughs> but it, it pretty much was just a giant. And it would just, every once in a while, just... Boom. Just a beam <laughs> would come out of his ass. Yeah. I love it. I, I yeah, thought it was I, fun. It's entertaining. Wow. I, how, I does honest- a, how, does a, how does a thing made up of cubes turn into a perfectly spherical ball? <laughs> They figured out eventually when they made it to yeah. it. Megatron I mean, shrinks. I into found a out. Gun. I was talking to some friends because I'm like, it's pretty amazing seeing how like those robots transform mm-hmm. in the new. Like, I don't like the new. I've only seen the first Transformers movie, the Michael Bay one. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. the only one. And then like they they transform. I'm like that's really neat. Like what you could do with a computer. And then I found out most of that's just bullshit. Yeah. yeah. Like it's not even like morphing. It's not like they they cross rigged a a a. a, a, a a it's truck. made to look like it makes sense, but it really... It's really just a it, bunch of jumbled shit. It yeah. looks pretty much just like static, mm-hmm. exploding and coming back together. Yeah, there's no else. there's no real logical sense. Like, when you look at, like, um, the instruction manuals for most of these Transformers, it's like there's, there's, like, a way that they make sense in how they transform from one thing to another. But with, like, the Michael Bay movies, it's just like... I don't know uh, how... We need to get from point A to point B. I don't know how I, anybody could transform these fucking toys... So mm. consistently, I remember getting years ago when I was I was into Digimon for maybe four weeks because <laughs> everybody else was. Yeah, because that's like with me with everything as a kid. Like Pokemon, mm. I got into because all my friends were into it, but I actually stuck around with it for a while. Okay. But then everybody was into Power Rangers, and I had a couple Power Rangers toys, even though I had. N- I personally no was knowledge. never into Power Rangers. And same with Transformers. Like I had friends who loved Transformers and shit like that, but yeah. I never really. 
got the toys or watched the shows or anything like that. Yeah. But like I had a Digimon toy where one of the Digimon would transform into one mm-hmm. of the evolved forms yep. of Digimon. And it was it's literally a dinosaur changing into another dinosaur <laughs> with a skull on its face. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't fucking transform it. Like it was it was impossible to remember, yeah. all right, do I bend the leg first <laughs> in and then pull the other one out, or do I have to do the head first? Like looking at the, I mean, like you have some transformers here that actually transform or you had them. Yeah. You still have them? No, I still yeah. have them. They're some all in the there. Yeah, like there's some here. up there. Like some of them like, in the I'm like the actual but the old the but the old <laughs> the old fashioned This ones, is a visual podcast. That, the, that these that these that this movie is based on on that toy line. Mm-hmm. To see someone actually transform that, it's like a Rubik's cube to yeah. me. It confuses the It does take I mean it really depends. Like some of them take a little bit too much time and some mm-hmm. other. Yeah, I can't but some loose parts. And but my opinion of the movie is still like I think from an definitely from an animation standpoint, mm-hmm. I'm just awed by the amount of of just work that went into having to yeah. animate animate a fucking box in perspective yeah. with multiple facets and arms. I know there's a lot of cheating. That's that's something that I really have to give this movie credit for is that there is a lot of really good full animation too. I mean, yeah, and there's a lot of good like setup. Like there's a lot of good framework. Um, when we were going into this, we were wondering, is this like standard format or is it widescreen when it came out to theaters? It was full theaters? screen originally. So I guess it was full screen when it yeah, came out to theaters, three. but I, then they, they made a widescreen version. They probably just cropped the top three, and bottom. They probably cropped top and bottom when they put it in theaters. Probably. And it's always been four by three and it wasn't widescreen until the 20th anniversary DVD release. Now, now the question version. is, when did the 20th anniversary, that came out? 2006? <laughs> Yes. There was a time period in like between 2005 and like 2009 mm-hmm. where they would just needlessly crop movies yep. to make them yeah. widescreen. Right. Like, like they did it like Dragon Ball Z fan. Disney, I know Disney that. did it with They've like Jungle that. Book and shit. Yeah. Yeah. And that bugged the shit out of me. Yeah. And even like with old movies, like they would take movies that were four by three and they would have artists design like borders to go around the I edge. I hate that shit. And it's like that <laughs> looks like trash. It's, it's so distracting. <laughs> it is. First of all, your mind. Because you have that frame, uh-huh. especially with an old, if you're watching on a widescreen TV and you have that box, the the black of the box goes away. Yes, you, it's, it, in, fact, in fact, it frames it. You know that it's it's separating everything outside your television mm-hmm. to what's going on in the screen. Yeah, yeah. and they're doing it like like and so like characters because we have something what we do in boards where they say um, kissing. When a character like there's a tangent formed by the top of a character's head yeah. against the top of the frame, right. and it, we call it kissing because it's it's like grazing the top. It's not like they're intersected. Mm-hmm. It's they're touching it. They're barely touching it. And on those DVDs, because they're cropping the image on the top and the bottom, it's to make cut it seem off. Like, they're cutting them off. Like people's ankles are cut off in odd places. Yeah. People's heads are cut off. Yeah. Uh, odd stuff off screen that you're supposed to see doesn't make. It, it's an easy way out to. It's bullshit. Like bringing them to a modern yeah. age now i'm complaining so, about aspect ratio but overall i thought that i enjoyed the movie i thought yeah. it was enjoyable and, and, and despite it's confusing and almost there's some <laughs> it, there's some imagery that almost wants to give you a seizure yeah so it's very light. well done i i i have to i i honestly admire this movie for the way it looks it's not perfect but the from what you see and how much detail every freaking frame has you have to give some sort of admiration to that. You ha- you have to like really look at this and say like this is not just really a toy movie. I mean, it obviously is, but it still can be something bigger. It, it's it, it, they obviously had a lot of care and thought into scene works and framework and, and animation. This was given a ton of effort. So this is I would have to say this is a good movie. So, I, I and I and I Steve laughs. I because I thought I was gonna have to come up with a different discussion, but you guys are kind of giving a thumbs up. I know you like Mike. You're never gonna watch this movie again. I, <laughs> I mean, say, I might. Oh, oh, you like it? Well, I'm gonna have to let you borrow the DVDs and stuff, and then like we could. Oh I'll no, I'm not. That, I don't no, care. I don't this. care that much. <laughs> but like one of the things I, I, I was I was planning on asking you guys was I don't care that much. <laughs> this this movie, when you break it down, it's just it's a marketing scheme. It's mm-hmm. a movie to sell toys on its on based, its legs, based on off its... of a series meant to sell toys. 
why are we talking about it? Yeah. Why why is why are this, people still talking? About why is this it? so yeah. iconic? Why did it get a thirty? Why is there a thirtieth anniversary? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. And besides, and also when there's I great mean, movies that have never been on. I have Blu-ray. nothing to. I I don't have anything to compare it to because I've never seen the movie before. I mean, you've probably seen it on old worn out VHS tapes. And uh, stuff. Not on VHS. My first introduction to it was its original DVD release. Uh, I think that was how the nice 2000, is the pi- 2003. How, how nice is the picture here in comparison to that? Oh, it's super clean. Yeah, it looks um, great. Yeah, if, it looks if really I can nice. remember because my I originally saw this movie in like early 2003. Yeah, I like the dead bug on the frame. Did you notice? That? <laughs> oh yeah, there was a couple moments where I was like finding like, little spots. Really, in, in the, I saw in the cell. I saw what looked like a mill bug. Or a pill bug, and it actually had little legs. Like That's it got amazing. it got stuck under the camera, and it just it's dead, and it's just sliding across. The <laughs> and for frame. and for someone yeah. that's watching this movie for the first time, for you to just notice that, well, yeah. I'm still distracted by every detail in this movie. That mm-hmm. that says something. Well, I mean, it would I wouldn't have noticed it if it was against the black void of space. When you have a giant white or li- light colored flat black thing, background, and yeah. then you just see a little black dot go <laughs> yeah. across it like this. Yeah, moving with the other bigger thing at the same that's rate the as the thing because it's on the same cell layer yeah. as another ship sliding in. I was like, is that the shadow? No, wait, that's like I that's think a, that's a dead I think that's bug. That's a dead or... bug. <laughs> <laughs> Unreal. Yeah, but seeing that kind of stuff, it it really, I mean, I also hate the, I hate to put it, it's like nostalgia for me because yeah. I love I love seeing like. I, I'm one of those people that loves looking at old shows from the 80s and 90s and just seeing yeah. the mistakes and just there's admiring mis- them for what they are and like how it how right. that happened. There, there's a you there's know? a mistake, but it's it's really there's a the pro, the problem with some back because before computers it's, it was a lot harder. Mm-hmm. If you want like there's that scene when you first see um, Hot Rod and the boy fishing mm-hmm. to get the reflection in the water. Because it's a, it's a, it's a transparency. Mm. What they do is they had to double expose the 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 footage, because um, it was a solid opaque cell, and then they had to run it through the camera under a double exposure so that it was at an opacity. Mm. And by yeah. doing that, when they re, because you have to shoot it twice in order to get that. Yeah. They the cell of the boy wasn't perfectly lined up from the first shot to the second shot, so you get this weird strobing double image of the boy when you zoom in on him, mm-hmm. which is just a little. That's just something that you notice because of the. It's it's a manual mechanical process to do that, and to make stuff glow and and look like it's glowing and shining and has a bit of a of a, ra- a luminescence to it, mm-hmm. you have to literally paint uh, matting and reshoot the uh, effects over it again and make sure that it lines yeah. up perfectly to the original cell. When you yeah. shoot it a second time and do it under the camera, like if you watch something like Roger Rabbit, mm-hmm. anytime a character has a highlight, a shadow, a reflection something or mm-hmm. an opacity like if they're looking in a, at, at water or in a mirror and there's right. a slight opacity there was n- that that wasn't something you could just go into a computer and turn on yeah a it, was, it, wasn't, a it wasn't something that you, you had to literally level. run it under the camera again with the film and make sure that they didn't like like if this is a frame i can't show you because you're listening but if a fr- <laughs> in the <laughs> people were watching it but if the frame is even slightly off there would be a jitter there would be that's all mm-hmm. like Technically, like watching something like this movie or like Roger Rabbit, mm-hmm. where you're like, "How the hell did they track all this?" Yeah, shit? that was a lot of work. I mean, I feel bad for the. Po- I mean, the animators must have had sore, f- had, must have had carpal tunnel by the end of this movie because they're Oof. drawing things transforming and explosions and guns and f- robots fighting. Mm-hmm. And they have to keep a track a lot of stuff. Right, and then mm-hmm. stuff had to be on the same layer too because the more layers of cell you have, mm-hmm. there's a cell thickness and that makes shadows and it doesn't shoot properly and there's a jitter. They had to like animate perfectly, like uh, mm-hmm. in perspective. These what looks like beautiful perspective, but if you look at them probably by themselves, they don't look too great. <laughs> right. But when in moving, they look really perfect. Yeah. And they have to match that all together. Mm-hmm. It's it blows me away the amount of effort. And then the ca- the poor cameramen who mm-hmm. have to look at an, a, a sheet that lists. Okay, we have an explosion and this and that and so forth on this layer, and then we have a ship that's moving in the background, and then we have stars, and then we have guns and lasers and yeah. people running, and you have to track that all on a piece of paper. And it's kind of like sure... having like you know when stop motion, is you have like a bunch of characters in the background that are moving along with the main focus action. You have to keep track. You have of to all keep that. track of everything, it's right? Like, but you have the, to remember these characters are moving here, and these characters are moving here, and then you have to remember that there's a main action, and then above that, there's also some special effects. And this that movie we're is all this. action. This is like the Mad Max Fury Road of animated yeah. movies, where it's just action every two minutes. Which I, which so I honestly, I mean, I admire for it. Yeah. It's like I, I, 
There's a lot of movies where I'm just like, I mean, there's one moment where there's the breathing room, which I feel is the Optimus scene, or the or the scene where the fucking boy puts on that stupid suit. <laughs> and he's, Falling Dad's on his face. exosuit. He told me all. Notice about how much it. we focused on the human characters in this. Try spinning. Yeah. That's a neat trick. <laughs> oh, That's what it sounds. That line. It's sounds- working. <laughs> it's working. Yeah, you ever notice? I don't uh, even know because I know there's a new Transformers series that they make that's on Cartoon Network. Mm-hmm. I don't even know if there's a human character in that. I probably. Like, I remember seeing. I saw a couple episodes of there was the one that was done by Warner Brothers, like oh, uh, Transformers animated, by, animated uh, where- Derek Wyatt. Yeah, it looks yeah. it looks like it has the same kind of visual style as Teen Titans. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's that. Yeah. that might be my favorite Transformers. I think it's, it, it I think mine it's really, too. I, I love thought the it was style really of pretty. It. Well, well, here's the thing stylistically, about stylistically. I thought it was oh, really yeah. pretty. All the, I mean, I love the fact that we have been able to have so many different iterations of the Transformers that it's not just one thing. Yeah, it, it, it can be interpreted in different ways, and there can be different interpretations to the story, to the characters, and what what have you. And I think that makes it. A series that is that's a perfect series honestly it's it's when you can take something and make it something else while still being Do something completely different with some of the characters and and it could still be like what it's on one meant side to be. you have transformers <laughs> on the other side you have scooby-doo which has had <laughs> 20 fucking shows in the last 45 years yeah. let me it? know when you guys wanted to scooby-doo in the wrestlemania mystery I'll oh play. yeah I, and the flintstones and Mr. Big 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 Big. <laughs> sorry i literally it's, think about that every time i see fred flintstone now i look yeah. at fucking flintstone it's, vitamins in the store well i, I can't help we, but hear steve we should, say that we should probably talk about the surf's up 2 movie that was <laughs> holy shit you i forgot any, about oh, that oh yeah they're just the Be- WrestleMania. I mean, I mean, I, for people that know, I'm a huge wrestling fan too. Yeah, and WWE is really <laughs> trying to be this entertainment brand overall, and now they're seeping into original animated movies, yeah. crossovers with Warner Brothers, and now they're doing they're heavily involved with the unwarranted sequel to Surfs Up. Yeah, uh, which I find I found hilarious. Like, the, all of a sudden, do the digging wrestlers up, surf? surfs up, but in the, wrestling, do the wrestlers surf and Surfs Up? Yeah. Yes. They're like a super. Do they surf wrestle team. while surfing? No, they don't. I don't think they wrestle at all. This this could be an entirely yeah, different podcast. Right, yeah, yeah, I'm not, I'm, but yeah, but for the time it. being, I, I I think we've given a good I, I, we've given good thoughts about good our, the Transformers. I, I I think it's a very good. I, I think it's a good movie, and I'm not just saying that because of nostalgia. Because I haven't honestly seen this movie at I all. I thought it was good, and I don't know jack fucking shit about yeah. the Transformers. It, it's a, it's admirable. Part of so, my part and, of my choice. And of Steve, work. obviously, you like the movie. So. Yeah, I him wearing his Transformers shirt as we speak. Am I, yeah, yeah, dare, 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 dare to be stupid. Dare to be stupid. It's oh re- wow! It's yeah. Retgar. Wait, with it's Retgar. Like, yeah. Oh, it is. He's with got the Fu Manchu and everything. And the Fu pipe Manchu. nipples. Yep. Oh, yeah, he's got pipe nipples. <laughs> I, I, I've, I've had this thought is since... Is it cold in here? Since, uh, like, since they started announcing that the Blu-ray was coming out. Yeah. And I was getting so hyped. I, I, I kind of want to get a copy. I, I have it on DVD, but I don't... The I Blu-ray watched looks the trailer really nice. multiple times, and here's... I'm not a big top ten list person, because my opinions always fluctuate. They always change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I I don't have a favorite movie, my all-time favorite movie. But now I'm starting to wonder, like, is this it? (laughs) And and I I know it's not a perfect movie. It has so many flaws. And Mm -hmm. not just as a Transformers fan. If you enjoy it despite its flaws and you think about it constantly, it's it's definitely one of your favorite movies. And I get hyped every time after (laughs) the giant asshole eats the planet and (laughs) those drums kick up Mm -hmm. for the Transformers theme. Oh, my God. It's it's a thrill ride for me. I'm starting to wonder, like, is this my favorite movie? I don't know. I, I don't. It'll fluctuate. You'll find something yeah. better, or you'll watch mm-hmm. something again. Because I go through, I go through stages where late, lately I've been looking up old movies that I saw as a kid or old specials, and then I'll watch them again. And I'll have them in the background like the following week, and I'll be like, man, I remember really, really liking this movie. Mm-hmm. I guess it's my no, it's not my favorite. Because then I'll find something else. And yeah, then I'll move on. But, yeah, it happened in my childhood all the time. It definitely sure isn't. It my it definitely isn't. We're back. <laughs> It actually is worse than I remember as a kid. Mm, yeah. Transformers, since this is my first really introduction to anything real. I mean, besides, I have seen Transformers animated. Yeah. Which I thought was cool. I, I didn't see all of it. I only saw some, like, maybe like 10 episodes. And I'm like, this is cool. I, I like the characters a lot. Yeah. But then, um, but this is my in- really, technically, my introduction to. I, I started, I honestly started watching G1 again. And uh, my friend, Phalus, 
who just made a top 20 <laughs> Top twenty list of the dumbest moments in the series. I'm I'm starting to like. It's hilarious. Oh yeah, just just the the moments that happen, and it's like it's a TV show. He he did the same thing for the Ninja Turtles show, which I thought was hilarious as well because I just had watched all of those episodes, and I was like, yeah, that was pretty dumb. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. but but it is hilarious in the way that there are good moments to the show, and then Uh there's like really. It's like they couldn't think of anything else in this I don't, moment. I don't think I could go back and watch anymore. And to be honest, like I watched most of the series when once I saw this movie, I started getting those DVDs, mm-hmm. and I was still enjoying it. But now that's over ten years ago. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'm afraid to even watch the episodes I liked. <laughs> well, I have to be in a certain mood to yeah. watch these. Yeah. Movies. If if I'm ready to see, if I'm ready to sit through a show that I know is like not as great as I remember it mm-hmm. being, I better be ready to just like sit but down and watch. I, it. I, this, <laughs> this movie, it, 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 that's how I was like. I realize it, it, still me, it, it means more to me because just like the existence of this movie brings some memories. Like uh, I have a childhood friend. You know who we've reconnected in our adulthood, and he's a huge Transformers fan. Mm-hmm. He's like the only person to talk to about it. Yeah, I remember one time I was not having the best week, and I was still living in New York, and he's living in Brooklyn. And he's like, "Hey, uh, this theater in Brooklyn has an original 35 millimeter copy of Transformers the movie. <laughs> you got to come and see it." And I was like, oh, "But I don't live in the city. I don't have a place to stay." He's like, "Dude, you'll stay with me. Come on, come in." I'm like, "Okay." <laughs> We proceeded <laughs> to get drunk off our ass and then go to this, th- run to the theater because we we're running late because we we're too busy getting drunk. And <laughs> yeah. of course, he gets chewed out by a w- woman sitting next to us because he doesn't shut up during the movie and quotes <laughs> the entire damn thing. And that was one of the, the best nights of my life. <laughs> yeah. And it's just a movie. I, I couldn't even remember necessarily watching the movie in the theater. It's just the experience of it. The, I, I'm, I'm always going to be connected to this movie. Even, yeah. this, even this was in Brooklyn? This was uh, Nighthawk Cinema. Oh man, you you know right? yeah yeah, <laughs> uh, one of the best moments of my life. Just because I don't know, it's this movie. Yeah, it's reconnected yeah. me with a childhood friend of mine too. Yeah. It's just well, the, and it, and that's what you should take out of it. Yeah, honestly. Mm-hmm. Uh, so well, that's our review of the Transformers movie. Um, I'm gonna like close this out with uh, Steve. Uh, oh. You also have a podcast. Tons. Uh, <laughs> but, I, well, yeah. Well, no. if if you would like to. Uh, uh, Plug your shows. Of course. Please, please, uh, by all means. Uh, the most consistent one is I am a co-host on the One Piece podcast. If you happen to be in the complete opposite direction, also a fan of the phenomenon that is One Piece, the manga and anime, I am a co-host on that. It's a weekly podcast. Yeah, I, I listen to this podcast and I have to say it's it's fairly entertaining. I mean, they're, it's a lengthy podcast yeah. each week considering the the... There's the subject matter, yeah. which is just like I mean, you recap the chapter, the newest chapter of the, mm-hmm. the of One Piece, every week, and also the anime, which yeah. also has a couple episodes, and, and then you also do stories. like theories and and news. It's, there's a lot. There's a lot to, this. to talk about with One Piece, and and, and I it, when I was listening to it, it's like I'm, I was kind of shocked about that. So, yeah. but. It's a fairly fun podcast. We've been going over personally, s- yeah, going over seven years now. So in this podcast, yeah, definitely look that up. It's uh, One Piece podcast, right? Yes, yes, yeah, One Piece podcast. And also, I have a couple spinoffs of my own that mm-hmm. I have to update. I've just been super busy. I do Endless Schmaltz, which is a podcast that I like to call just going back and watching shows from our past and see how well they still hold up. Currently, just going through the anime series Gundam Wing, but I always thought like one day <laughs> I'm going to probably talk about Transformers, but. We'll see how it happens. And I also do a show called 20 Minutes of Bullshit with my friend Alex, and that's just kind of just the shoot the shit for around 20 minutes or yeah. so. That's what I do. And also, I'm just an artist. You could find me. Yes. Uh, yeah. Tell us where we can find you. Yeah, just uh, it's so easy to find me because everything is just my name, Steve Yurko, on Twitter, at Steve Yurko, Instagram and Tumblr, just Steve Yurko. Yeah. I'm super easy to find. <laughs> Deliberately. Yeah. Awesome. And um, you can find us... Uh, Animated Anarchy on our Facebook page, which is uh, facebook.com backslash Animated Anarchy cast. That's probably the best way you can get a hold of us and uh, give uh, send us questions or, or discuss things and when we upload a new episode. But, Mike, I also would like to say that we have a P.O. Box that uh, where you can send us stuff uh, if you would like. Uh, that's completely on your own volition. Um, if you would like to write us a letter, I know that uh, we usually will 
we like to read letters and stuff like that uh, whenever we can get them. So uh, I like reading. So, uh, you know, give us a letter. We could read that on the show. We can discuss what whatever we get or whatever things that you want to show us. And uh, you can go to that uh, uh, and write to Animated Anarchy, P.O. Box 10... Oh, God. 10... Okay, P.O. Box... 10852 Burbank, California 91510. Again, that's a uh, PO box 10852 or 10852 Burbank, California 91510. So, I, I want to see someone actually write to you guys. I want <laughs> someone take that time. That'd be uh, amazing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> if you actually know the medium of actual media <laughs> please write to us uh yeah so you own that, a pen yeah so uh yeah if you want to do that um feel free um we could you know make something up of that mike where can people find you i'm on twitter yeah and tumblr mm-hmm. from time to time <laughs> but it's just michael j mm-hmm. and i post i'm trying to i'm animating more in tv paint yeah so i'm animating some tests and things which you're having a blast on. I mean, yeah, it's yeah. fun. <laughs> and uh, my Twitter is at a guy who draws. Yep. It's not my first choice. <laughs> easy to find him, though. Yeah. Real easy to find. Who's that guy that draws? <gasps> yeah. Him. And you can find me on Twitter. I'm at a w d t w i t. That's a w d twit. And I am also on Tumblr a w d place dot tumblr dot com. Um, Where you can watch Andrew draw things like Jiminy Glicket. <laughs> do it! Oh, boy. So, uh, yeah. Our co-workers even want you to do it now. <laughs> no, no. How do you feel, feel, feel about that? Say <laughs> 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 And Anyway. <laughs> so many tangents in this episode. So, yes. Uh, yeah, that was our uh, podcast on Transformers movie. I hope you enjoyed. I'm Andrew. I'm Mike. And we were with... Steve. Yay! And thank you so much for listening. We will see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. To all of you.